Uh, we are here at Lockmo 2018. This is our first stream of the event here. Yep. We're going to be going over uh, the narrative event that's going on right now, which is Cauldron of Battle. The Cauldron of Battle. Battle. There's really multiple cauldrons, isn't that right? There is, actually. There's, so <laughs> yeah. this is a narrative event for Company of Iron. Right. Uh, there are four tables playing simultaneously, and there are four players per table for a total of 16 players going on. It's crazy. Four cauldrons, four people per cauldron, probably four, way more than four battles per Four cauldron. teams. So there's yes. a team represented at every, ta every table. Yes. A team member, I should say. Yep. Our four teams are uh, defenders. Liberators, opportunists, and wild cards. And uh, so what's going on here yeah. is this is about uh, the the caches of like stuff of goo. I always like to call it <laughs> left behind by the Crucible Guard here. Right. The the idea is that the Crucible Guard um, has maybe created these like huge water towers filled with alchemical horrible alchemical things that they've kind of just situated in various places. You know, because nobody minds a water tower. You can just kind of put one up wherever you want. Sure. And people tend to leave it alone because they just figure it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be there. No, <laughs> and, uh, no one expects the Crucible Guard water tower. So, uh, clearly the word got out. Um, all these different armies found out that these towers exist, that they're full of alchemical goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, e we have various groups that either want to get it back for the Crucible Guard. Maybe they've been hired to uh, bring it back. Those Which are I the, believe would be the liberators. Those are the liberators. Um, we have those that want to kind of keep it in control of, say, Kador, who's taken over a lot of the territory that the Crucible Guard used to own. And defenders. Uh, those are the defenders. Uh, then we have the opportunists. And the idea with the opportunists is that they, uh, they, are, they want this stuff for themselves. They don't want Kador or the Crucible Guard to have it. And I believe in our narrative in here, the opportunist team is entirely cricks. There's, there's quite a few so, cricks, I think, in the opportunist. There might, there, I mean, is it all cricks? I think it's all cricks. Okay. Uh, and, and that's kind of fun, because I'm not even sure they're there for the alchemical stuff. I right? think they're like, probably just there for corpses. Yeah. Although, I was thinking that some of the alchemy stuff in these towers could be used to, like, soup up bile. Like, you could get yep. some, like, supercharged Super bile, bile out of that. Like, <laughs> so, like spray tin bile. Yeah. And then we have the wild cards as our final team, which is just, like, nobody knows why they're there. Um, they're, they're there for their own purposes. There's some weird stuff on each of these tables that they might be there to take advantage of. And so they're kind of, as the wild card name suggests, they're going to throw a little wrinkle into things. Yep, and I think we've got some Grimkin on that team. I think there's yes. some minions on there as well. They're not really here for the normal purposes. Who knows? And, and I heard earlier Oz with the teams allowed the Grimkin to be wherever they wanted. Because yeah, the you pick. can't tell what Grimkin are about. <laughs> So they were able to join whichever team they chose. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. We've got this multi-table uh, water tower fight going on. And yes. uh, we're going to find out now about the game. And uh, But Here we go. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I still we don't know the entire mix of factions we have. Uh, hey, everybody. It's 16 people. So. Here we go. Oh. Um, I, I apologize for my allergies. Hi, I'm um, Will Oscarnover, Development Manager at Privateer Press, and this is the Lock and Load Narrative Event for 2018. Any of you guys might have seen the Boards Gate event from last year, big 16-foot table, 16 players, crazy, crazy team game. This year we're doing something a little different. This is a Company of Iron Narrative Event, so there are 16 players playing four-player free-for-all games at four different tables. We are going to have scoring based on the teams. We split these guys into teams. There's uh, liberators, defenders, opportunists, and wild cards. So you'll see scores creep up as the games go. And thematically, we are fighting over leftover Crucible Guard facilities. As the Crucible Guard and the Order of Crucible um, starts to crank up their war efforts to come back into Kador and, and take back some of their stuff, these are some of their way stations. So, Players will score off the towers. Most models within six inches of a tower at the end of a round scores a point for that team. And the objectives on the tables are control facilities for alchemical stuff. So if you are controlling one of those objectives, you get a bonus commander card. This table over here, uh, the main one that the uh, stream will be following most of the time, is a bunch of elven ruins. We also have a swamp that an off ink wagon was traveling through. <laughs> we have a, a circle of Ouroboros set up, and we have a train yard with some cannons scattered around it. If you are unfamiliar with how our narrative events work, players also get a narrative token um, that they can use once a game to do something crazy cool. So if they say something like, I want to try to turn the train on and run over those guys on the tracks, that can happen. When that happens, we will get the camera to them, 
We'll grab this microphone, we'll talk about what's going on, and if it's a very difficult thing or very powerful thing, then something might not work correctly and things might go a little sideways on them. I think that we are basically ready to go, um, and I'm going to throw this back to the commentators right now, and, uh, and we're okay. going to start going. We caught a little bit oh, of Oh, by the way, right Hungerford's also yeah. helping. I introduced myself earlier. Um, Will Hungerford, our organized play developer, is helping out with this event. He might be on the camera at some point with a mic. I might be on the camera at some point with a mic. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. And um, this will be going until 6 p.m. tonight. We'll take a break for lunch at some point. We don't know when. Um, uh, but you can join us in all day long and come in. Different commentators will be on the streams, and we'll just see what happens. Okay, back to uh, CCAT and Pagani. Yeah. Hello, and welcome back. I, Oz was able to explain it a lot better than we could. Well, no, I think, I think we did a good job. I mean, I, it, was, it was fine. <laughs> he talked about fine. points and things. Points. Who cares he about what that? what a point is. <laughs> so, uh, Who even knows? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we should also explain that um, uh, we have a fixed camera set up on one of the tables, yes. right? So we're probably yeah. most likely going to be seeing... Um, a table that's sort of IOSIN themed most yep. of the time, a lot but of we do also ruins. have a mobile camera that will be going to the other tables uh, periodically as something crazy happens, like Oz said. Mm -hmm. um, we're real excited to see how this all goes down. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I'm still not, I don't have a great sense of the different team or different groups we have out on the, on the table, but we'll, we'll, we'll learn about that as this goes on, as, as events start to happen. And so, so I know a little bit of stuff that the, uh, the players don't know here, okay. which is kind of cool. So yeah. I can kind of fill you guys in at home as to what's going to happen throughout this event. So each of these objective markers is sort of the, the, uh, the pressure valves or different things that they can use to kind of control this tower in the middle of the board. <laughs> to try to control uh, To try the to control the board, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the tower in the middle of right. the board. And... Uh, as they fiddle with these things, uh, they're going to add tokens to them. And right. as, as Oz explained, right, like you get a bonus card, so if you control one of them, and everybody wants these cards, uh, you're going to have to roll a dice every time you control one of these objectives. And it's going to either add a token to the objective, which right. is like a malfunction token, basically, or it's going to add one to the tower in the middle of the board. Uh, and and, and depending pressure on the, is going to be building yeah, up, right? So, so depending on the number of like malfunction tokens, or I don't know exactly what Oz is calling them, but whatever <laughs> these tokens are, uh, Different things are going to happen, right? As like the game basically, goes along. the the goo or the smoke, the yep. the 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 caustic alchemical nonsense that's in yep. this tower will start to bubble over and and explode out onto the table in some horrible way. Yes, yes. So there there will be a whole lot of things that are like uh, it'll create cloud effects and they wander on the table. And until someone walks into one, we're not going to tell you what they do. Okay, cool. Things like that. It'll uh, it'll spray acid at people. <laughs> and then there are some that are good, right? Like some are, uh, some are bonuses. Yeah. So well, I mean bonuses right like one of them is like you get covered in trancer goo and now you're a trancer so sorry so you get cool telepathic get, powers it, but you might explode later well yeah i mean so there's like, always a price to be had for for telepathic powers it's it's a trade-off it's a trade-off really <laughs> yeah um yeah so that's sort of an example of some of the things that you can you can get from these from these towers and stuff and these will come from the objectives themselves which are going to be right in the middle of players armies or from the tower in the middle of the table and there's all sorts of things that can go on right that from uh, when you were watching um, the last one, did you find that the players were tending to use their sort of like plot point cards earlier, later? Does, is that something that people tend to hang on for a little while? Hang uh, on usually, to for a while? Usually people hang on to them for a little while. Yeah. In Boar's Gate, we had a lot of them get used right at the very end because people would get desperate at that point. Right, right? and then they you're really trying to one-up each other yeah. too, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, and we had some that got like played against each other, right? right. So I think there was one where we had a Xerxes 2, which is Xerxes riding on this giant rhino kind of creature. <laughs> right. And he was like, I want to take Xerxes, and I want to take my rhino, and I want to bulldoze through all these infantry and then jump off my rhino and get up on the wall right. for Boar's Gate. And then somebody was like, oh, that's awesome. But I have a galleon over here, so I want to try and shoot him out of midair as he's <laughs> jumping to the wall. Like, that kind of stuff would happen right, with these right. narrative tokens. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm really excited to hear what happens with the, uh, yes, the narrative tokens. Yes. And, and I feel that plays into Company of Iron really well in particular. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and I, I like that the tables are populated with these like really unique and yes. interesting terrain features. That's actually one of my favorite things. That players are going to be able to interact with with these tokens, right? And in ways that are going to be uh, essentially free form, right? Like right. we don't have set things. So when it's like this destroyed phoenix that's up here. Oh, uh, there's a there's a phoenix this, on the table yeah, over so, here? so like there's a destroyed phoenix inside this rec marker right Oh, okay, here. cool. So like that guy, for example... Um, that guy is 
like maybe we can get him reactivated or something. Sure. Or, I, I don't know. Like that's some of the narrative things that I like uh, that I, I want to see here. I do like this board quite a bit in particular, just because <laughs> like it's clearly somewhere maybe in iOS or like on the outskirts of iOS. Like just just imagining the shenanigans that had to happen for the Order of the Golden Crucible to set up a water tower in here. You know, <laughs> like some people had to get bribed. You had to like maybe there was some zoning uh, that happened. <laughs> you know, like maybe some <laughs> Elven zoning laws were <laughs> yeah. Like were we, talked about we here. know we know iOS lost some ground when the Scorn were attacking. Like, maybe this was in that kind of battleground area on the outskirts of Lael, where it's like, the borders got moved back a little bit, maybe, and, and Ios doesn't recognize it, but now there's some statuary nearby for, <laughs> for others to enjoy. So, so what is the, the timeline difference here, Doug, between, like, the Scorn invasion and the Cawdor invasion of Lael? Um, like, just basically, I don't need I think, I think it's basically, it's like the, um, uh, the invasion is more recent, so the scorn, uh, the scorn attack would have happened prior to okay. uh, the, f the well. Okay, that's not actually true. Let me let me let me back up sure, and explain sure, sure. that a little bit. We have we have multiple stages. So Kador invaded Lael early in 605 AR, took it over, okay. um, but then we have Signar going back into Lael to try to get it sure. back, which is the more recent development. Sure. And so that's that's when the Crucible Guard is kind of getting involved. Is in the current timeline when. Um, Signar has made this big push. They've, they've faltered a little bit. Uh, things didn't go as planned. They need some external help. And um, the Laelis resistance has some friends within the Crucible mm -hmm. Guard. So then the Crucible Guard gets to have an opportunity to get some of that stuff back that Kador sure, stole sure. several years ago. So, so do you think like an explanation for this for this kind of board could be like Scorn came in and they moved the borders just a little bit like you said, right? Sure. Like they pushed some people out. And then um, maybe Kador, when the Crucible, maybe. when the, when Cotter came in, yeah. they kicked out the Crucible guards. Maybe they went towards IOS. Maybe for some of them. this this table is pretty hard to explain. <laughs> in terms I think we're doing of a fine actually, job here. In Doug. terms of in terms we're doing of a fine job. I would not say this table is canon <laughs> per the setting. I would not want to sure. place this on the map because because one of the issues is the Laelis resistance owns. Mm -hmm the uh, Laelis territory closest to Ios, ah. but maybe, maybe you know... Well, there could uh, be an alliance there, right? Well, like, right, or, or Karchev comes through one day, like, kicks a bunch of resistance guys out, takes the territory. Like, a lot, one of the, the fun parts of gaming in Lael, not necessarily um, uh, living in Lael, is how many times the places change hands. Sure. And so, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call this new Lael... New. Former IOS <laughs> on this table. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> new, new Lael slash new Kador, mm -hmm. and now uh, it, that's depending IOS. on who you talk to, right? <laughs> yes, like, yeah, absolutely. Depending on which which tavern you're in. But regardless of who is holding it, the Crucible Guard set up a water tower. Sure, here. I mean and, they needed their goo and filled so. it with horrible stuff. With horrible things. <laughs> it might not be horrible. What if it's just filled with kittens? <laughs> and really, they're all fighting over this stuff, and they're like, "Oh, it's actually just kittens." <laughs> I don't think it's kittens. I I'm pretty sure it's not. But <laughs> but it could be um, it could be for example like if you want to carry on the the kitten motif, it could be one of these um, biotic serums that mm -hmm. supercharges, enlarges, and um, kind of uh, creates a a military horror out of your kittens. Uh, so <laughs> so you get military so, horror kittens. So you get I like like, it. like a Laley's Ferox counterpart that's okay. that's uh, got a short lifespan. Uh, but it's but will murder anything that comes near. Like sure. that could be what's in this tower. And, and that kind of goo would be something like Alice uses, right? Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. we have sort of a Jekyll and Hyde character in the the Crucible Guard, and uh, yeah, she uh, takes a little sip on some serum and turns into a hulking, scaled monster. It's a weird, weird jumpy thing. It's great. Oh. We're we're getting some information from the table, and we'll yes. relay it to you all here in a moment. Ah, we've got okay. some Northkin on this table. So we've got uh, we've got an update here. We have some of the uh, the theme forces or company upgrades as they're called in Company of Iron. Um, we have the Grimkin one that is allowing for double witch woods. Okay. And then we also have a Northkin one that has some ambushing battle bears, which would normally not be allowed in Company of Iron because they're large bases. Oh, I see. So these theme forces that Oz has created kind of let you uh, break the rules a little bit whenever you're building your force, which is which is really fun because then you can sort of do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do or that kind of stuff. So. What, what were the other two uh, armies on the table there? Oh, if we're talking about our, our primary stream table here... Yeah. Um, Let's see if we can get that. Let's see if we can get that information. I kind of want to know what each team, uh, each of the the groups is playing. I, like I said, I do think there is one Grimkin force. Unless I misheard Oz, I think there's one Grimkin force that's uh, um, a liberator, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, sure. I don't know if it's this one. Sure. I mean, here we go. We're panning over to this table here. That looks like some cotton. That's cool. Look at that. We got the Authink wagon on that table, which yes. I don't know how that happened. That's also not canon. <laughs> no, dude, it's just hanging around, driving around. Maybe in, that's where uh, they parked it later. In you know. Lale. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Excellent. So our, our mainstream table here, we have Circle uh, in one corner, Crix in another, Grimkin and Signar hanging out on this table here. So we've got our Grimkin there in the top left. Uh, looks like our Crix in the top right. Uh, ooh. And then Signar in the bottom left. And I guess that leaves Circle. Do we Circle's know, the top do we know right. a Sorry. team so uh, is the bottom right. each of these guys would be? Crix is probably uh, um, ah, here we go. an a much opportunist. So yeah, that is definitely circle in the bottom right, okay. uh, and then Crick's in the top right there. Uh, so we've got some blood trackers down there. Blood trackers are really quick, Doug. Really, really quick. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, these four-way skirmishes tend to get pretty bloody pretty fast. They do, they do. So Oz ran an event kind of similar to this at Adepticon, which went over super duper well and was a lot of fun. We had a uh, we had a lot of like screaming and yelling. So I hope we get right. some of that going in here because it's it's really good when these when these objectives start doing stuff to your army that you didn't know was going to happen, and you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> so I, I'm expecting some some juiced out transfers goo to land on some people and people. Yeah, go. absolutely. I want to see what happens when you transfer goo a madcap. <laughs> I want to see that madcap Tele turn yeah. into a transfer. Telekinetic madcaps is probably yeah, not good. Horrifying, <laughs> Doug. I think it's the word you're looking for. Drunken, horrifying, overpowered telekinetic monsters. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so I we, we got blood trackers here on the, the table. So I'm presuming Signars probably liberators, right? I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing that Signars are liberators here. Um, I'm Let's see guessing if we can assign these guys. I think the Grimkin are wild cards. Okay. I think I heard that. Okay. Uh, and then we said Cricks are opportunists because okay. all of them went over there. So that leaves Circle as defenders, which is kind of strange. So Circle's working for Kador. On I, this guess. One. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Maybe or the Grimkin's a defender. It could and be. The Circle's the wild you know, card, I mean, when sure. the Circle's working for you, it's always a little dubious. So they probably, yeah. they probably have their own plans in mind for for what's happening. But it could be a little further down the line. They like for for their planning, it's better if Kador gets this tower mm -hmm. than anybody else. Mm -hmm. that, that's the kind of stuff that the Circle. Or does maybe like sometimes. the tower is polluting something. That maybe some of the 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 wolf sworn or the Tharn tribes need or something like that. That could be a reason. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Although I think that though I guess that would make them this like an this battle is not going to be good for the environment. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of goo everywhere, and and nobody wins. There's a cool looking circle theme table over there. Yes. So some more real estate that's been misappropriated. <laughs> so so we've got those three giant shifting stones. Yeah. Could yeah. the circle just teleport that tower somewhere? <laughs> Maybe. It, it does like, look like they get it out of here. It does look like they've got a sort of a harmonic convergence around that thing. They are they are appropriately but sized. But again, so like imagine the, the crucible guard like, you know, coming in talking to your local blacklads and they're like, "Look, we've got a tower we want to build here. It's not going to mess with your uh, shifting stones." Um uh we don't think it'll interfere with the ley lines, but we just we just need to put a put up some chemicals here, and I, I the like black clouds are like, all right, I, I guess, yeah, sure. I like to think that they're uh, they're like supply caches for later. Okay, in in my mind, <laughs> is I don't know, maybe they're pumping it into the earth. <laughs> do, do Crystal Guard do like terraforming via chemicals? Nah, well, do you think? I think um, the closest you would get would be some kind of strip mining. You know, sure. Sure. Um, I could see. Yeah, I'd like pump acid down into the ground <laughs> sure. and like suck all the goo back up and then yeah, extract a thing yeah, out. Yeah, I know that. Um, I know that uh, there's some harsh chemicals involved in smelting, in mm -hmm. in separating ores and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And metallurgy is an important part of the Order of the Golden Crucible and the Crucible Guards functioning. There's a lot of advanced metallurgy going into those uh, railists. And they they also make the blasting powder for basically the. Ye the well, civilized world. Yeah, for for um, especially for your uh, commercial, you know, your average Joe on the street who wants to buy a gun, you gotta usually you're getting blasting powder from the uh, Order of the Golden Crucible. But they also have some military contracts. Sure. So they uh, each of our each of our militaries can make its own ammo, but sometimes you run low, sometimes you need a little extra, and the Crucible Guard's willing to make that happen for a fee. For a fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's actually a question that I had, which I guess you just answered, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, if they make, do, do they make the majority of the blasting powder in the setting? Would you say, or I, I think sometimes if I wouldn't say that. Like okay. I think where it gets hard is we know Signar, for example, has a lot of guns. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, yes, definitely. So definitely. Signar, I think, is fully capable of making most of its ammunition on its own, okay. um, and has its own dedicated, you know, 
arsenals for that. Um, similarly with Kador, like well, like we would never want to set up a situation where either Kador or Signar is like reliant on an outside agency, uh, you know, to make its Orjax function. Um, but but like I said, there's there's a degree to which the Order of the Golden Crucible serves as this valuable surplus. Plus, there's a lot of groups and organizations out there that are not governments, especially like our mercenaries. Like sure. I've always considered the Order of the Golden Crucible to be probably um, most of your mercenary firearms are are packing Golden Crucible ammo. Sure. So like steelheads, for example, yeah, absolutely heavily, heavily supplied by the Golden Crucible. Yes. Cool. Cool. But like, because because like in my in my head cannon, which yeah. is always <laughs> horrifying. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, like, they supply all the blasting powder, which you've now corrected is not correct. <laughs> but, uh, like... But it it's, kinda, it's, it's, it's significant. Sure, but it, it kind of led me to be like, well, I mean, if they really hate, hate Condor now, like... They could just cut it off. Yeah, what if they just, like... Yeah, and that, that's, embargo that's not so. quite possible. But one of the things that happened with the invasion of Lael um, and the seizure of the Thunderhead Fortress, which was the Order of the Golden Crucible's old headquarters is like that was a big deal because um, there was some major manu blasting powder manufacturing in those facilities that Kador took. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Rainier in Northern Lales, like a major source of the red powder in particular. So by taking those facilities, Kador got an advantage. Like sure. they were like, we got a new influx of powder and equipment that we didn't have before. Cool. And uh, cool. so that's why we see some alchemical stuff coming out of the um, invasion of Lale, like uh, the assault commandos with their sort of alchemically treated gear. Sure. Sure. So, and would you say something like a strike tanker, perhaps, or maybe some of these uh, Manowar chariots, or something that was like developed from this new yeah, I think maybe, so. or the new powders? I, and I think that and the the Kador's capability to create more advanced munitions took a, took a step forward when they took over the Thunderhead Fortress and looted it, and also kind of forced a bunch of former Golden Crucible people to work for them. Sure, sure, and so, that's, that's why we're seeing these these new. Like more high tech weapons, out yes. Of them. Instead of like their bombards that they would normally have, we have and, like the assault cannons. And just in like sort that. of a geopolitical level, the other thing that's interesting is with Ord specifically. Like Ord of the Golden Crucible moved to Ord, and and now the Ordic King is sort of supporting the Order of the Golden Crucible, and that's why we're seeing like now the Crucible Guard is a thing. Is like it's a way you can think of the Crucible Guard as almost a proxy Ordic military. It's like gotcha. They're beholden to the Ordic King. And he can kind of use the Crucible Guard to interfere in international events sure. uh, by by sending them out there with their rocket men and so on. But let's 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 see what's going on here with the game. Absolutely, absolutely. It looks like we got a lot of people just kind of moving up and positioning at the moment. Yeah, we're in the early uh, cycles now. They're trying to get to um, there's control points the, on the map. Yes, and so, those are what's granting the extra cards. So let's do a little doodling here, Doug. Let's, sure. Oh, that is the wrong button. <laughs> here we are. Uh, so we've got our, our four little control valves here. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the big tower here in the middle. Each player is almost certainly going to be running up there. They're going to be trying to grab their own thing. Once and they, they just don't need know to what's get people happen. adjacent to that? Yes. Yeah. So I think they have to get a guy within three inches and not have an enemy within three inches, which is going to be very likely to not be contested this turn. Right. Um, but each one of those has like a little pipe that's running under the ground into this thing. Right. And it's going to start building up pressure. It's going to start building up all sorts of stuff going on here. Um, so these players are going to get to draw additional cards for these. And then at the beginning of the next round, they're going to have to roll a dice for each of them. Okay. And that's where that, that malfunction is going to start coming in and stuff. So so that kind of thing is, oh, is going on about, there. I think he's about to start doing some rolling on that. Oh. Yeah, so Oz is, one of our tables has finished their first round. So they're going to... But that might that not kind of be stuff. the one we're watching, right? Yes, no, I don't believe that it is, because these guys are still definitely moving models around okay. and stuff. But, yeah. Yes. So, in our, in our first table here, the one that we're, we're watching, we'll call it our primary table. Sure. Maybe our IOS table. Yes. Um, there, there are some, uh, some models that are going to be popping into CID here, so I want to I talk about that a little oh, bit sure. here. So, we've got some Tharn blood trackers down there, and this is one of our... Uh, one of our recently announced CIDs that's coming out, which right. is going to be happening in a couple months here, uh, after our, our red CID. And um, he's playing specifically Blood Trackers which, with, uh, with Nuala here. And she's going to be one of the models that's receiving some changes. So she's going to be picking up a new mini feat. Uh, we're not talking about exactly what it is yet. That'll be for the, the developer hangouts and stuff that happen on later. But she is, uh, she is picking up a new mini feat, which she has never had before. Right. And uh, personally, I'm pretty excited about it. And Hungerford's over here. So I'm going to high-five him right quick. Boop. And here we go. Hi. 
So I'm excited to later this weekend talk a little bit more about the Tharn and Wallace yeah. specifically, and as well as the Blood Trackers and stuff, and talk about what we're going to be what we're going to be working with them on. Well, I, I as a as a circle player, I'm excited about uh, all the upcoming Tharn stuff. I've always loved the Tharn. Going back to the old RPG. Excellent here. We've got our Cricks running on up. These are Satixis, so they are very, very speedy. So I think the, uh, the Satixis here are going to be one of the more aggressive forces here. Right. So I'm... Uh, so on the bot... Um, yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Go, go over what we've got here on... Huh? Okay, so this is our primary tables we talked about here. Yeah. I mean, so we have we have blood trackers as well as uh, Satixis, right? And so they're, they're kind of hiding behind fast. the tree, the blood yeah, trackers. Yeah, which is not really going to help them too much because <laughs> Satixis have Pathfinder. <laughs> yes. Or can get Pathfinder, assuming they have their leader. <laughs> that is one of my favorite uh, units in the game, the, the blood trackers. The blood trackers? Yeah. Oh, I love them so much. I, I played them so, so, so much in Mark II. And actually, uh, the reason I don't play them now is because when I moved up to Seattle, uh, when I got hired by Privateer Press, my entire unit got absolutely smashed. Oh, they are so very fragile. It's very, very sad. Uh, I've, all the spears I've had broken. many spears bent and twisted. Yep. The javelins, yep. I should say. Yeah, the, the javelins, all their little shield arms are broken. Um, but yeah, they... They're, they're some of my favorites that have ever been out there, and I, I just really like how they play on the table. Yeah. Like, they're really fun. They're the sort of hit-and-run style. They, they remind me a lot of Rocketman, actually. Maybe that's why I like Rocketman so much, because <laughs> I always liked... Uh, how do they... Just, just, like just in terms counters. of play style? Yeah, yeah. Like, they're the skirmishing unit. They're really okay. hard to shoot. Like, Rocketman get really high defense. Okay. These blood trackers have stealth, that kind of stuff. Oh, look at this. Oh, so Hungerford here has the Iron Gauntlet. Yes, Which is uh, the trophy for the Iron Gauntlet. Uh, champion That's this year amazing. is going to be this gauntlet. We, we switched <laughs> up our trophy style. It is an actual functional gauntlet. Like you That's could put amazing. that on and just clock somebody with it. <laughs> it's really he's trying to snap. No, <laughs> don't, don't, don't don't do it. Don't snap. Doug, are you feeling okay? I, I, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> okay. All the commentary made it. So there you go. It comes with uh, a display stand as well. So it's not just a gauntlet. You do get an entire trophy to go along with it. So. so is the winner um, obligated to wear the Iron Gauntlet to every game through the course of the oh, next that year? That would be heavy. That th <laughs> that, yeah, that, like that is I legitimately it's, it's a probably, real Iron Gauntlet. It's probably hard to move so. your minis around when you're wearing the, yeah. the Iron Gauntlet. Yeah, I mean, you do have a leather glove underneath there, so it's not quite as awkward as it could be. <laughs> right. um, but, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that is not a messing around gauntlet. <laughs> so. I do. It really does crack me up that we have an Authentic Wagon. I'm really hoping for some good plot events on that table. <laughs> Related with our to, offhand here? yeah, trying to release maybe a dragon or you know, oh god, yeah, well that would be weird. <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm gonna take the offhand and I'm gonna stab it into my heart. And you're like, no, don't do that. <laughs> That's a full dragon. Don't do that. That's not gonna work well for you. Why is <laughs> so so going back to the offhand wagon? Why is it like a a white box? Like is that what it's in? Like there's an yeah. The, the, in the, the box? idea is that it was a containment device. Uh -huh. um, the old witch had some some involvement in securing it was sort of this this champion among Torx brood who had been one of the 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 most serious threats to okay. Torx in the original clash who got taken out he got like you know crashed to the ground the old witch i guess got in there and got the off tank or something Just before anybody else could get fingers. to it with her little claw hands and uh, put it in a box and oh. uh, <laughs> oh, nice. and, and then buried it under a mountain in rule Okay. And kind of set up like this whole wacky containment system so that like basically it was completely cut off from the outside world. So okay. it was sort of like it was sealed away. It, a lot better than the box that the Iosens used for Everblight, which clearly did not work yep. entirely. Yeah, that, that certainly did not go as planned. <laughs> that box think. was supposed to also be completely contained. Mm. But then you have an Ogren that wanders up into the mountains and he hears yeah. some voices in his head. So basically Everblight found a way to like kind of like get a message out from his little box. Well, that's, that's what you get for using, like, <laughs> bargain store boxes. Yeah, well, yeah, like, you, you got to get... You got to, and it's that active containment field, I think, that the that the, um, that the the old witch came up with, with mm -hmm. these engines, you know, like, you needed to have those, like, hoops that the wagon has. Uh, there need to be some moving parts, basically. There, there has, yeah, it's, but it's just the movement, right? Like, there's something <laughs> special about the parts. I think the pro that's the problem with the Iosens, is uh, not enough It was sedentary. Parts. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, there you go. 
There you go. Let's see what's happening. All right. Here. So we have a new uh, a new table that just finished their first round as well. So people are starting to add these pressure tokens onto things on other tables. And I believe it's going to be the start of the second round is when things start going real wacky for people. When do when do people start scoring points? So it's at the end of every round. Okay. Uh, I believe. So there should be some some points scored at some point. Somebody will have to go uh, hit up Oz and Hungerford and right. see what the, we, the current scores are. We'll have to get the updates as they happen. Do you have a, a side that you're rooting for here? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm always partial to circle, right? Sure. Um, and so and how many how many circle uh, players do we have? Do you know? I think at least two, right? I think it's two. Yeah, I think I saw some druids on one of the tables, and then I've got um, I've got these these blood trackers down and, here. And we need to confirm teams, but I we were thinking that the circle is being um, uh, liberators, right? Yes, I believe so. Or were they or no, defenders? No, 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 defenders, defenders. Okay, defenders. And then the Signar was, was Liberators. That's right. Yes. But we do need to confirm teams on our prime table. So, so I also want to talk about this terrain a little bit, right? Sure. Because uh, these Iosin ruins are beautiful. They're great. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And... I was looking at him pretty closely last time I was on the stream table with him because this is pretty similar to the table that I played uh, my last weekly rumble on, and it doesn't look very difficult to do. Oh, really? Which, which to, is to make which is the pieces cool. like once you kind of look up close as yeah, to how they yeah, were made. Yeah. Those are some of the best terrain pieces. Is something that looks great from a slight distance, but yep. you know you don't have to be a master sculptor <laughs> to, to put it together. Well, I mean, sculpting is an entirely different thing. I don't know how you actually physically make <laughs> sure. it, but the painting of it because like marble is always so hard to paint, right? And like, so, what was the so trick unique. with these? So from what I could tell, and we could get Danny on here later, maybe, sure. and he could just school me on this. But from what I could tell is that they were painted that sort of whitish color. Yeah. And then they were airbrushed with the, the like, shading, basically, that teal green color. Right, get a little of the green. Uh, and then the cracks in the marble or the, the streaks that are through it is, like, a really watered down, uh, like, coal black, basically. Sure. And then they kind of like made these streaks with it with a brush, and they kind of pushed harder in certain places, so you get the the, sense the of thicker depth. spots, yeah. the thinner spots. Yeah, there you go. That's you cool. You can see it really good right there. Yeah. And and that kind of thing, it just like it looks so good. Well, and I have so to say, good. I mean, even just from a making it stance, like something simple like a like a stone piece like this, like that wouldn't be too hard to make out of foam. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. So if you are at home and you do want to make some of these these narrative event style tables that we're using here, you can see them. Right here, you can get some pointers from this kind of stuff. Uh, and if you do come out to Lock and Load, uh, you can hang out with Danny, and Danny sure. can tell you how to make all this stuff. Like he can tell you how to make those little pillars. Uh, these trees, I believe, were made by Danny, and these are um, wire frames, and then they have uh, resin put over them to sort of create this these striations and the, the bark and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, so Danny can nice. help you learn how to make all these things. Clearly, we have a little autumn theme going down over here. It's autumn in Ios, <laughs> except for that autumn one burned down Ios. for us. Well, yeah. Well, uh, we've joked about that before. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I quite it quite cracked me up with the the retribution book when we had uh, like the whole forest on fire and like also we were showing like all of the like knocked down statues and you know it's like it just really makes gives you the sense that that the Iosans are not taking very good care of their own stuff. You know, no. I mean, they're look at that building that that somebody just let fall apart right there. Like I. I really hope someone uses a narrative token to set all these trees on fire. Because that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, sure. oh, everything makes sense Burn now. it all down. That's why it's always burning in the art. <laughs> well, because yeah. the Grimkin showed up and uh, set it on fire. It could be. I mean, as an advanced, uh, technologically advanced group, the Iosans might burn down part of the forest just to, for cycle of growth, you know, mm -hmm. to replicate, like, wildfires. Well, I'm sure, sure it's all perfectly reasonable. Perfectly planned. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we've got our first round going here. I think there's some stuff going on on this table. We. All right. So we have no points scored. And it does look like the defenders have scored one point. If we could get a stream update on that one. See, I keep feeling like I should root for the defenders, but it's the liberators that are the good guys. So I'm not rooting for the defenders. Even though Fair. Circle... I do like Circle. Mm. I, they, they have their reasons, I'm sure. Yeah? I do yeah. like that, that in, ostensibly um, these are Kador-owned facilities, but there's no Kador on the table, right? <laughs> we don't yes. have any Kador players. Yep. So they have basically um, farmed out all of their fighting uh, in this particular narrative situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we had some steel heads, that could have helped. <laughs> sure. We do I have a couple like, of Merc players, I we know. Do. We do. Um 
So I also, I, I know this got mentioned earlier, but for those of you that are tuning in later, this is a narrative event for Company of Iron. We have four different teams playing on four different tables, four four-way free-for-alls with four teams. Uh, and whenever any one of the teams scores a point throughout the whole weekend, right? So this isn't just a one-game event. This is going to be several games of Company of Iron. Uh, I know we're also running it all day tomorrow. And the total points scored by each team is over the entire weekend to determine who wins. Uh, and then I think something cool is going to happen when one of these teams wins. Uh, and we'll get a, another like narrative piece and stuff. So uh, we see some people there with some, some store bags. It always warms my heart. People are buying stuff. High fives all around. <laughs> yeah. The we giant did backpack bag full they, of goodies. They like us. They really like us. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we have all the uh, Golden Crucible stuff for sale, right? Yep, yep. Well, not all of it, but a, a, good, a very a good large chunk of that it. faction is here. Uh, we've also got a couple other pre-releases. Some of the, the Protectorate stuff that just went through CID is here. Um, including the Shrine. The Shrine of the Lawgiver is here. And that is a beautiful model. I'm, I'm really excited to get one of those and paint it up and not glue it to its base so that I can use it as terrain. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I'll also, it's of course, a great have terrain the base, piece. Uh, so, that I can, so that I can use it as a, a Shrine of the Lawgiver as well. And here we so go. So Oz is going around checking on the table, seeing yep. uh, where rounds have ended, making sure that we've got our points accumulated. Our primary table here is just about to finish up their round, I believe. Looks like our top right tricks is all good to go. There might be a uh, Tharn or two hiding down there in the bottom right. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but it looks like we are just about done. Aha! Well, that answers that question. There are no Tharn hiding in that forest anymore. Oh, good. They've all come out. Yep, throwing so javelins. This so maybe our last Grimkin movement here is going to end this round. And who do we have in the upper right over there? Excuse me? Is that Crix in the upper, upper right? Upper right is Crix, yes. Okay. That is a Satixis force. We've got the, uh, and then we've got the two witchwoods over there in the top left. Yeah, those. Which God, I love witchwoods. The witchwoods so are great. Cool. They're so cool. I felt, I, you know, I felt like uh, bad for Wormwood after the witchwood came out. I was like, you know, Wormwood needs a, needs an upgrade. I think. Yes. Yeah. That tree is is beautiful. He's looking because Wormwood looks sad. You know, it's got no leaves. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of bones. Yeah. Yeah. Wormwood is another thing that has not been taken taken good care of. I think like needs some attendance to needs a little love. Yeah, somebody's got to get their little bonsai shears out, <laughs> right? Prune them down a little bit. And there we go. We got the Satixis running through this uh, this wrecked, burnt forest burnt area section here. Of the forest. I do hope somebody's going to be like, I want to use my Satixis Blood Witch magic to turn back on this Myrmidon. I'll be really curious to see what they make use of on this table. Like, what, like we have sort of a little ruined building over here. Yeah. I could see somebody trying to like push over one of these pillars, maybe. Oh yeah, well, I want to. Like, I want to see cool. like, like the Grimkin could maybe like animate that statue. Oh you know? gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that could be extreme. <laughs> I want to see like the you know like if the Dreamer had some influence here, you know, just yes. kind of come in, start oh, warping that would be things. So cool. If the Grimkin narrative token was like, there's a warlock close by, so like reality starts shifting around and <laughs> right. stuff. That would be great. Oh, so we definitely have, so so these guys right now are rolling a dice for their objective. So the six that was just rolled there by the Signar player is going to build some pressure up on their valves. Uh -oh. So that's, and then next turn, bad things are going to start happening. Okay. Here we go. And here we go. Somebody got a one. Okay, so our first weird thing is going to happen. Yes. So, so for the weird things to happen is these tokens build up, right? Uh, one, the tower got a token. Okay. So that's not good for anybody. That's bad for everybody. And then two, the... Um, the Yeah, so, so this is one of our good effects, right? So okay. this is sort of the, like, the tricky one. We're like, oh, no, this was a good result. But, but as pressure builds up, it's not going to be. <laughs> but they don't know any of this, right? So I right. hasn't told them anything about this. So, so what happened here uh, is like some really calming mist came out, and everyone gets to draw an additional commander. <laughs> it's a calming right? mist. And by everyone, I mean people around the objective. I right? see. So... Uh, so, so it's pretty unlikely that this happened because you have to roll equal to or under the number of tokens on it for it I to see. happen, right? So he rolled a one. Right. He, so he as the game six, goes on, we're going to see more wacky stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's random the number of tokens that get added, and then there's um, the random roll to see what happens, basically. Right. So we we've got one token on our tower here, and we got some calming. Lovely alchemical goo coming out, <laughs> just being like, you know what, you guys should fight just a little harder. It's the pa the pacifier mist. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very handy there. Sometimes, you know, like one part of the battlefield gets a little crazy. You get like uh, the butcher, you know, and some some doom reavers, like on one side of the battlefield. 
you spray a little calming mist on them they and just, then just they like just calm right down. Take everybody a just kind of takes a nap, sits down. Just take a little nap. <laughs> That's all we need. All right, and we're calculating points here on this table. Yes, okay, so we, we have no scoring on this table here. Because okay. two different teams had one model each. And, and the scoring is based on proximity to the tower itself? Yes, correct. So you have to risk getting in real close into that center circle. Yep, yep. Right, yeah, and we kind of expected that in the first round. People would be going for those control points. Get definitely, some guys definitely. on that, and we'll probably be seeing more movement into the center. And uh, as a new update here, we do have the chat open now for us commentators over here. Good. So if you guys are hanging out in chat and you want to ask us questions or talk to us about the game or anything, or if we, we mess something up, and that Goblin River Raider hanging out there in that tree, man, he is beautiful. <laughs> he is beautiful. I have not seen too yeah. many Goblin River Raiders running around, and I think it's a severely underused model, especially when you have to sacrifice That's a cool-looking force. We got, we got so. some, some bog trogs. There's a misspeaker in there, a gobber chef. Oh, are those great. living or undead bog trogs? Uh, those bog trogs are undead. That's sad for them. Yes. Yes, <laughs> so you can't feed them. Oh, no, you can feed them to things with your gobber chef there. <laughs> oh, man. So these cloud effects are pretty cool. Oh, One we have the, some cloud uh, effects out. Yep, yep. I think those are just ones that were deployed on the table. They're not our special ones from our, uh, from our tower here. Uh, I see. But uh, when the special ones from the tower come out, you've got to be real careful with that because it's this, like, mind-altering gas that's going to make you attack your buddies and stuff. <laughs> oh, great. So Oz and I had a really good time coming up with all these effects that I were just really wonder here. who left that wagon there. I know. It's just like the horses are <laughs> well, frozen. Well, where they parked it, I guess. You know, they figured nobody was going to come by this area. Yeah. And it's probably whoever lives in that shack down there. Yeah. <laughs> that is another one of those drain pieces that I'm like, wow. <laughs> I like the amazing. shack. Yeah. It's like made out of real wood bark It is and amazing. Stuff, it's so. got like the little like um, sort of uh, cloth you know, roof repair. It's got like the little, little you know, like sections that burlap sacks. Yeah, burlap sacks have been nailed on there. That's excellent. Yeah, this table's actually quite, quite cool. Oh yeah, is it, which one's your favorite, Doug? Which, which table's your favorite? We got I don't IOS. Know. We got Circle. I like the train one too. Oh, it's a shame the train one's so far away from the cameras because we can't really show it. <laughs> we haven't the train been able to really show cool. the train one. Yep. Yep. It. it Oz is checking in on whether he should ever get on and talk. <laughs> well, I think we're he's like, going to narrate the, um, the narrative tokens and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, sure. And if we have any cool events that go on, I think that's when he's going to hop on in and explain what's happening in the game rules. All right. Our blood tracker has just run on up to the tower there. We got our first person. So oh, yeah, right up on the how tower. How to score the objective, how to score the tower for okay. your faction, for your team, uh, is to have the most models within six inches. Uh, models in base to base with it are worth two. Oh, wow. So we're just going to kind of get a group hugging the tower? I think we're going to get a pretty big scrum here in the middle. <laughs> scrum of which everybody. Which is exactly where these blood trackers want to be, Rushing up right? to touch it. They can, they can run in. They can, uh, they can stab people. All good to go. Uh, we do have a couple people in chat talking here. Legionnaires asks, why aren't there more gobbers? Is the chef cooking that bad? Doug, <laughs> what do you think? I don't think his cooking is that great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends. <laughs> not where I thought we were going there. <laughs> It depends. Like I think I, we we have featured in the narrative before, um, I, and I'm blanking on the name right now. But I, I know in our Steelhead narrative, um, we had a gobber chef that was actually very skilled, very good. Uh, had a variety of recipes. Was able to improvise with um, you know unusual ingredients. Like uh, I think we had some kind of like corpse larva stew or something in that oh, story, God, why? which sounds bad, but uh, you know they made it taste really good. Um, Oof, but I think true skill. I think most of the skill. time, if you're a gobber chef, you're just trying to keep the people fed. Like you know, it's not so much about is the food good or it's is there food. <laughs> sure, sure. Now, now, Doug, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a question that I always had when I was a community member. <laughs> okay. And I just, you, you can just tell me no if you want. <laughs> but I want to know how does a gobber chef feed a shifting stone to a wold wrath? Well, because that, in the game that works, you can do that. <laughs> to, they're feeding a shifting stone to what? A Wolderath. Well, I mean, to me that makes sense because uh, at least, you know, at least it's a, it's a it's a wold, right? Sure. They like <laughs> rocks. They're made out of rocks, <laughs> right? So I mean, that's that's kind of I think that sort of shows the versatility of a chef 
when you know maybe you've got had to learn some carpentry, uh, maybe you've <laughs> sure. had to do some stone masonry. Sure. So you, you kind of you, you get out your biggest hammer that you know maybe you would use to like crunch bones. Sure. But you could you could use that with a chisel to open up a stone, get sure. to the good pit good bits in the middle. <laughs> get to the the, the chalk, gooey inside, the, the chalky tasty inside. Yeah. And maybe use that to like <laughs> patch the cracks on the wall sure, path or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's probably actually the the most feasible explanation is you grind it up into a powder, mm-hmm. get some get some uh, liquid in there, become sort of a loose cement. Uh, we know that that blood, the bubbles in blood, actually mm-hmm. played a key part in ancient cements, and so that's oh. something you could replicate on the battlefield. Okay. All right. All right. Sure, I hadn't thought about that. I didn't. I didn't know that that piece of thing there. But yeah, I think a little little impromptu cement to keep your keep your wold wrath going. Sure. Now it'd probably be hard to explain like a shifting stone being fed to a warp wolf. Sure. I mean, <laughs> I hear Gedrix will eat about anything. <laughs> so yeah, that's just the power of the devourer worm. Yep. The the worm uh, prefers meat, but sometimes meat isn't available, and that's why. You know, trolls will sometimes eat stones. It's, sure. it's never as good as, a, as like a little raw meat. Slag trolls as well, right? Like they'll yeah. eat, they'll eat, eat some metal. metal and goo yeah. and that kind of stuff. Have highly corrosive acid in their stomach just to eat metal. We have a new viewer in the chat named Steel Crow. Welcome, Steel Crow. And he says, what factions are you all using? I'm new to the game. Well, excellent, Steel Crow. What we've got going on here is pretty crazy, actually. So it's going to be a lot to follow. But this is four different Company of Iron games going at the same time. We're commenting about all the different things here, uh, talking about the fiction, talking about all that kind of stuff. And there's four players per table on each of these four tables of Company of Iron. So there's actually 16 different players here. Uh, our main table here is this one uh, that's showing at the moment. We've got uh, Circle in the bottom right. We've got Crix in the top right. We've got Grimkin in the top left. And we've got Signar in the bottom left. <clears throat> And, and each of those players represents a different team. They're each here for Correct. different reasons. Uh, we do have some reports from the front uh, that is unfortunately was not caught on camera. But the uh, a Gatorman husk, which for those of you that don't know, is like this weird, like acid-filled, bug-filled, it's bug-filled, yeah, bug-filled <laughs> corpse of a Gatorman that's sort of been animated by magic. And you correct me if I'm Sewn wrong. Together, here, I'm yeah. just going to kind of go with sure. This. Yeah, go, uh, go uh, with it's it. like voodoo magic going on here. Just kind of shambles around. So it ambushed onto the board, which kind of is just walking in off the, the board edge there and shambled into the back lines of one of our Grimkin players here. Oh, no. And then exploded all Ooh. over them because that's what that happens. That's the, a bad The bugs get angry. Grimkin. The bugs get real angry there. <laughs> well, and you have to wonder if some events like that will broaden the Wicked Harvest. Like, they've been focused mostly on humans, but there's a lot of wickedness going around. There's, there's wickedness in the other... And the other uh, peoples of the Iron Kingdoms, so, you know, I'm sure the Gator Men are some of what they're doing could be qualified as wickedness. Sure. Uh, do you think the Grimkin would be like, oh no, that's awesome. We should steal that idea. <laughs> like we I could, think, we could fill you up with bugs well, I, and then I, send you on your merry I way. I think they would appreciate that because you know they like nightmares, they like like folk tales, um, mm-hmm. you know, thing filled with bugs that walks around. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. <laughs> We have another comment in chat here from Legionnaires, which is, could you turn the insides of Shifting Stones into chalk tofu? Uh, I wouldn't call it tofu, but it, well, it is vegetarian, I guess, or yeah. at least it's not meat. Probably. <laughs> so I think it qualifies as um, uh, pseudo-vegetarian, maybe? Oh. Doug, we're going to go down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> if I used blood to make the cement well, then that I made that's Shifting the Stones well, that's why you, of. If, yeah, if you're, mm. if you're trying to feed blood cement to a vegetarian friend, you should really warn them ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't want to get yeah. those mixed up. Like if yeah. you're if you're if you're a vegetarian tofu stone eater, mm-hmm. you don't want to have any blood cement. Well I, I think we've gotten very specific here, Doug, <laughs> and uh, what exactly is well, going on. Different people have different um, eating requirements mm-hmm. and we appreciate all of that. We have, we don't have any, you know, uh, biases one way or the other. Looks like we've got some NIST charging in over here, rolling those four damage dice. Probably way overkill. This, this is uh, this is one of our Merc forces on the Authank table. Yep, yep. Our Authank cloud table here. Looks like we got Hearn and John. I like seeing Hearn and John in Company Absolutely. of Iron. They got that big uh, that big cannon there. These guys, pretty popular choice in Crucible Guard as well. Uh, you can take them in that new faction. Oh yeah, that's cool. I, I forgot that they uh, they could do that. So they've they've got a very powerful ranged weapon which they can utilize very very well. Yeah. It's like one of our first. Uh, Dwarven Ogren buddy team ups. Yeah. <laughs> kind of set the stage for all of rule. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, we got a couple more people in chat. anti meditarian perhaps. <laughs> anti meditarian I think that's a long way of saying vegetarian. <laughs> um, and then we have I Gun Hazard. Uh, E-Gun Hazard. Sorry if I butcher your name here. Uh, don't they make stone soup in Circle? It does explain what wolves eat. <laughs> well, yeah, I do think, um, you know, the, the a stone is, is something that can be included in a soup. Add some flavor. <laughs> does it add flavor? <laughs> I mean, I guess it might. I've never tried. Uh, well, it's a mineral. <laughs> it has a flavor, I think. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can get, see if we can find a, a Facebook chat feed that we, so we could see. Oh, so we can have Facebook and Twitch F chat. Right now, I yes. think we only have Twitch. Yeah, Trader Caveman, I think, brings up a, a good point here. Salt is a stone. And Indeed. that's definitely something that's delicious. Oh, absolutely. So, Yes. Uh, we got a cool action shot of our blood tracker here. She's currently holding oh, down cool. that fort. She's the only one that's in base contact with that building. So <laughs> she will score a point for her team should no one else get close enough. I think we're going to start seeing some of the skirmishes break out here. And then uh, I think when it happens, Doug, it's going to happen fast. So the uh, mm -hmm. and this was sort of one of my questions I wanted to, to talk about here, Doug. Sure. Which way do you think these Tharn blood trackers are going to go? We've obviously chosen Signar here, but do you think they hate Signar or Crix more? That's a good question. Um, you're talking specifically about the uh, uh, which group? The the blood trackers here attacking into into Signar or uh, moving north and going into the Satixis. And and what are they? Are they consider they considered defenders? I think they're defenders. Yes. Which yeah. kind of makes sense that they would go out for Signar because they're liberators. In yeah, this, yeah. In this scenario, I think it works. So. Like I said, I, my my feeling overall is that the the circle is playing a deep game uh, involving who gets the final access to these chemicals. I think that yeah. they're they aren't they aren't necessarily needing them for themselves. They just don't want specific groups of enemies to have access to them. Okay. Okay. So now they need to run up right up on that tower, like yep. like the one we have we can see there. Yep. We've got a couple cast gems popping out over here as well. That's cool. So, can I just say how much I love Madcaps? They do so much crazy stuff. And <laughs> they it's are. so much fun. Kind of curious if uh, any narrative tokens are going to start getting oh, used yes. for weird things. Mm hmm. Let's see. Uh, some of our new, uh, some of our new crucible or not crucible guard uh, exemplar models here. Actually, it's not the new models, but these guys just went through CID, so they've been they've been updated. They're they're the um, most recent uh, group to go through. Yep, yep. There's just wrapped up a little bit before lock and load. Uh, and then we're going to have Retribution up next, which will start in, uh, I think, a couple weeks now. Not too long. Mm -hmm. Not too much longer left. We do have a couple of people asking some questions in chat about spoilers and stuff. We unfortunately cannot give out any spoilers at the moment. Uh, some of these things will be talked about during our developer hangouts throughout the weekend. It is one of the benefits you get from showing up to Lock and Load instead of just hanging out with us on this stream. Though we do appreciate you hanging out with us, obviously. Sure. It is, it's always fun to, to chit-chat with Doug and, and hang out with the community. So I'm excited to be here. Yeah, me too. And I'm sure the rest of our commentators will be as well. Looks like we got some more injury tokens going on here. Our little madcap guy just hucked a bomb over there. Killed him a, a trencher? Was that? And then uh, obviously set him on fire as well because those small top <laughs> cocktails are sure. pretty cruel. Like they are. I think that's that's horrifying. Oh, oh. I, Oz, Oz is warning us that a narrative token may be being used. Yes, I want to see that when that happens. But he's not sure when. It's they they can it's, keep them. So each is it each player has one. For each the player has one game. per game. That's yes. pretty rough. So yeah. when we do play our second it's and like an or Uber third feet. round of this uh, today, there, yeah, it's like a super feat, basically. <laughs> but also one that could work against you, depending <laughs> yes. on how. Because basically what happens is Oz plays GM, mm -hmm. uh, plays Game Master, and just kind of decides what he wants to have happen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I remember, oh, God. I think it was last year. 
we had a storm wall get basically infested by gremlins after yes, it got destroyed, I remember right? That. And then like a storm wall <laughs> came back from a wreck marker. Yeah. Or from like I think it had just been killed and there was like three gremlin swarms around it or right. something. It's <laughs> so, like the gremlins got to hop in and like reanimate. Yeah, it, it was like a trade off, right? Like, yeah. He gave up his gremlin swarms to have this this to have now, a, a, a janky gr- storm a wall <laughs> colossal on the table. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite uses of the yes. uh, the narrative tokens. That was a very fun one. Very fun one. So yes, that trencher over there has been injured. So if he takes any more damage rolls, he will be removed from the table. The no one that's right rolls. kind of behind that pillar? Yes, this guy right here. I can uh, I can point him out. This guy. Right. Right there. So he's taken some taken some injuries. Yes, I think he's our first injured uh, injured model here. Okay. These, uh, these multiplayer games can take a little bit longer to get going, but I find that once the action starts, it just goes. Yeah, once everybody's kind of pushing in close and competing for points, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change Aww. things up pretty fast. There's beautifully painted blood trackers here. Beautifully painted. I, I love the blood trackers. This, this gentleman here has done a fantastic job. Yeah. Fantastic job. And then there's a, a Bloodweaver Night Witch right there. And they're, they're um, fragile, but of course in Company of Iron, you get a lot of opportunities to uh, re-roll and, and keep certain models around sometimes Absolutely. To, to frustrate your uh, adversaries. And they've, they've got quick work. A company of Iron models with multiple attacks. Very oh, powerful. Nice. So, Oh, it, uh, it looks like we've got our first narrative token going on here. Oh, really? I heard Oz. He's walking over there. He's going to hear the player's uh, request, and, and then, then he's going to sort of figure out what he wants to do with it right. and how it's going to work. So how this works is a player get, says... My idea is blank. And then Oz will tell them how to do it. What really happens. Yes. (laughs) So we're getting a camera over toward that table. Yep, yep. I think it might be our train yard table, which is great, because then we can show you guys that fourth table. Yeah, we hadn't seen that table. uh, A little farther away, a little harder for us to get a camera, too. Oh, yeah. I've been ignoring you, Chad. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, I'm definitely eager to see. So now here, here we see... Uh, players trying to lobby Oz for some kind of nonsense, <laughs> some kind of crazy thing that he wants to do. Definitely. Um. We're, we're. Right. Oz will be going live, Ooh. and we will shut up for a bit. Okay, so we have uh, our first narrative token use of our narrative event. If anybody didn't watch Boardsgate last year, a narrative token is a way to break the rules in an interesting and cool way. And if what you want to do is crazy wild, then it might have negative consequences. So what we've got uh, some, some Warjack on Warbeast action over here. And you want to use a token. So what do you want to use it for? Uh, he has walked into melee to kill one of my druids. I would like my wold to walk up there and either throw him away or slam him into the tower. So you want to, like, interrupt kind of counter charge? Yes. Okay. So you... Neither of I can't be thrown or slammed. Oh, you can't, he can't be thrown or slammed. Okay. So his, his magical powers are, are, are messing with this. But... <clears throat> the narrative token could allow you to draw on the power of the stones here, because you are a circle player, to overcome his magical defenses. But that might mean bad stuff happens. I'm circle. Bad stuff is going to happen anyway. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's say that your your uh, your druid guy, because he's the leader of the unit, is the guy doing that, right? Correct. So. He pulls from the stones magical juices to overcome the Signarian magics that are protecting that Warjack. Okay. Um, but the Devourer Worm's not always the nicest guy. So possibly it might draw some of your own juices out too. Okay. So I'm going to make you take, what do you say, like a POW, what's your armor, like bad? Oh, armor bad, yeah. Armor, oh, armor no, bad. 13. Armor respectable. Armor 13. You want to say, like, he takes, like, a POW 8 damage roll? Works for me. Okay, so you're canceling out Signar's magical powers, but it's possibly going to hurt you. Fantastic. Two points. 
So drain some of your own life energy away. But the Devourer Worm allows you to counteract the magical power of the Signaran spell. And that is your narrative use. Feel free to do crazier things than that during the game. Just not crazy things like blowing up the tower or forcing someone to uh, have a heart attack and die. So, all, all he's doing is undoing that, he's gonna get some counter attack also. If I can get yeah, I wanna rush, I wanna counter charge him with a model that oh. does not have counter charge or counter slam him. Hmm. I would have made that a bigger, a bigger damage roll. Roll an extra die. Four more damage. Okay, you can do that. Okay, so that was, that was the use of a narrative token. Um, other things like that might happen this game. Uh, I really want the gremlins on the other table to get to the train and turn the train on. And uh, if you do want to use an air token soon, just let us know. Okay, cool. All right, so our first narrative token has been used. And during that narrative token, uh, Doug Seacat turned into Matt Getz. Hello! It's a... Uh, it's not the narrative token I thought that was going to happen, well, but here we are. Here we are. My favorite narrative token use. Oh, yes. Absolutely the best. Uh, so that narrative token was a World Watch moving out of activation, mm -hmm. running on up, and trying to protect his unit leader by throwing him out of the way. Okay. So that was, his, that was his narrative token, and he did that with the extra energy from the stones around that circle table, okay. allowed that world to move and attack outside of activation. These headsets make me feel like we're in a helicopter. Uh, hello, guys. We're coming in for a landing. Have you ever? I've never been in a helicopter. Oh, okay. I've, no, I've been in a helicopter. I've never driven a helicopter. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so, we're back to the action here. Yep. Trailing my inner Brent. Uh, Gets just to kind of catch you up. Our narrative event here, four players, four, t four players per table, mm -hmm. four tables, four teams, one person on each team per table. Uh, we've got our score down here at the bottom. We're at the end, probably wrapping up round two right now, I would guess, pretty soon for these guys. Uh, defenders have scored one point, and this is a running tally all over throughout the weekend. All right, so and all the defenders want Kador to keep control over... Correct. Okay. Yes, Liberators trying to get Kador out of there. Right. Pitch him out. Uh, opportunists are trying to basically steal the stuff and get out before mm -hmm. anyone else notices. Wild cards, who knows? They're here. It's maybe. kind of in the name, wild cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we've got a husk coming in. Oh, we, we got a new narrative token New narrative. Here. I think we're going to swap back on over to Oz here. We got some player laughing, so this one's probably going to be pretty good. Okay, so we have another narrative token. Narrative tokens inspire the use of narrative tokens. So we have a, a gator player playing on the swamp table, appropriately enough. And this is your, your boker for your swamp shamblers, yes. right? So, the Boker for the Swamp Shamblers just died, but they're right next to their favorite shack that is just swarming with termites. So he's going to use the last of his magical juices to infuse himself with termites and become a Gator Man Husk. So his model's going to get replaced with a Gator Man Husk, and now there's a Gator Man Husk in your army instead of that guy. Was he also your leader? Okay, okay. So, by the power of the termites of the swamp, he is transformed. And there you go. More narrative, more crazy. That's what happens. So, I, I just got to ask, like, yeah. on that table, do we have any wolds? Because termite-powered husks would devour a wold. <laughs> I would use my narrative token to have something go on with that. Oh, yes, that would be great. Especially, like, if it's someone else's wold and someone else's husk, yep. right? Or, like, narrative token in the steelhead orkin man <laughs> to deal with the termite husk. Be like, this guy, back in his home, he killed termites. Yeah. That's what he did. This is Steve the Termite Killer. Steve the Termite Killer? Yes. Confirmed for 2019. So for those of you in chat um, that do not know what a husk is, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. A husk is like a gator man that's filled up with bugs and stuff and then kind of reanimated by dark magic kind of stuff. Yeah, like just standard gator man necroman necromancy. Classic gator But man. the great thing is if you poke them, they just like burst bugs all over you. Yes. So poking them and not killing them, not good. Killing yep. them, also not good. They explode when they die. Yeah. So you don't, you don't want that anywhere near you. We do have a couple questions from our Twitch chat here. 
uh, Eltharian Grim, Eltharion the Grim, uh, asks any note or any idea when the keynote will be available. We missed the stream due to work. I believe they're actually already up mm. on our YouTube channel, uh, which I believe is PP Prime or something. Prime to Press Prime. Yeah, on YouTube. Yes, yes, we should get Oz some cough drops, Legionnaires. Hopefully, he doesn't die. Um. Yes, yeah, so Oz, we're back to our main table here. Oz is catching yep. people up on the appearance of the husk. That blood trapper, tracker, trapper? Blood, blood trapper. trapper. They trap blood. New unit confirmed. Um, these blood trackers still look like they're holding down the fort here. We got a couple cask How do you in, hold uh, down the fort? Over there. You jump on top of it. Oh. Okay. And then you try and pin it to the ground. You wrestle it, guys. You wrestle it? You wrestle it. Mm -hmm. I fully agree with that. Uh, a surprise appearance by Shake here is all about wrestling buildings. Good luck. I like how close we get when I do this. Oh, mm. it, it sounds like somebody's trying to grab a, a grapple claw when they kill their target. <gasps> oh, it's the it's the uh, the Swamp Coffer River Raiders. Right. They're going to steal his grappler claw. <laughs> the best. <laughs> the best. All right, so we so may have another narrative token going on here. A lot of debate happening right now. Oh, oh, that's that's going or, in the back pocket. It's not happening yet. Ah, uh, yes, some some narrative token debate happening on our our swamp cover table here. So Doug mentioned like Crucible Guards building these things in real weird places. Beginning. Yes, yeah, very strange. Like Ios or the swamp or a train yard. Train yard seems to make the most sense. It does. It out does. of all of our options. Yes, and these towers are being represented by uh, our partners over at Warsenal. Warsenal, yes. Uh, this is one of their kits that they have made for us based on a War Machine Tactics building. Yeah, it's the Steelwater... Steelwater... Steelwater water. Rail Water Tower? tower? Something? Water... S steel water tower, tower, Water Rail Tower? Steel... Hmm. Is there steel or water in the tower? The, well, it's is made, a tower of steel made of steel full, full, full of water. water. It, Wouldn't well, that rust? It probably stainless, stainless steel. Mm, done. If anybody invented stainless steel, it's the crucible, mm -hmm. right? So. Ah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Model Looks placement. Like judge game state. Nope. Not a turn <laughs> nope. game. Nope. Mm -mm. Company of iron. You do what you want. There's some debate going on about Volatile. Yes. The, the Cask Imp rule uh, in Company of Iron, I believe, is going to be if you are injured or knocked down, you explode. Got it. Steel, Steel, Steel Water, Water Rail, Rail Tower, Tower is the official name of the, uh, the water tower there in the middle. Steel Tower, Water Tower, Rail Tower. It's a tower that has both steel and water in it. Mixed together, perhaps. Science! Steel Water. Technology! I mean, guess we could be millionaires. We could make a new company just selling water named Steel Water. Oh. It's actually just water. So. Oh. We've got Hungerford being called over for a narrative token. Oh, yes. We got, we got a Hunger token. If you're ever playing in one of these events, you always want Hungerford. Why is to that? Do, to do your, your narrative token, because it's going to be crazy. You know, I, I did narrative tokens in these, too. I'm sitting right next to right. you. Did a so great job. we have a narrative token being used oh. over here? All right. What's your name? My name's Scott. All right, Scott. What do you want to use your narrative token for? Uh, we are going to consecrate the tower to Minoth. We are going to bathe it in holy light and force all others away from it. So we're gonna pray to Minoth, consecrate it, so much that Minoth's fury comes down and snaps one of our trees a little bit. We got a little battle damage that just happened. That's fine. We have a whole team of people that fix that. And you want to try and push every way away from it? All right. You'll use your narrative token. Minoth blesses the tower. Roll me a d6. And that's how many inches everyone's going to get pushed away. If you roll a six, they're also caught on fire. Five inches. All right, so in an order you choose, push every model directly away from the tower five inches. Blessed. You're a holy tower. Thank you, Minoth. Thank you. And there we are. Minoth's light comes down from on high. 
I like the possibility of Menot's Light causing water to burn people. I mean, it makes sense. It's like Castlevania-style holy water. Holy water. Holy water. Holy water. From this day forward, pilgrims are going to go visit that tower forevermore. <laughs> That's actually what a shrine of the lawgiver is. is it's a water <laughs> tower that has been consecrated by Menot. That's what the shrine is? Yeah, it looks a little different. It's not quite as tall. <laughs> it's made out of resin instead of wood. Uh, but that's, I feel like that's how they all get made. I mean, I can confirm it. Yeah? Yeah? Absolutely. Oh, I just heard the word Athank. Doug was really excited to see what they're going to do with the Athank cart that's on that table. Sure. So I hope a player does something with the Athank there. The Athank containment wagon? Or yes. the dragon wagon? The dragon wagon? <laughs> Excellent. I feel like you should have like an old witch on the front of it being like, meh. Do that again? Meh. Great. So, on this table, looks like we have some protectorate versus some cricks. Yep, I'm got this is me catching up. I'm sure everybody yes. knows that. Well, no, no, but I think it's good because if we do have people that are tuning in during the uh, during the stream and didn't catch the quite beginning of it, we can talk about it here. So, yep. our bottom left here is protectorate exemplar. Our top left here is some Satixis raiders. Uh, our bottom right. Some Signar, it looks like to me. Yeah, it's the Black 13th with Allison Jakes. Uh, it, does, it does look like Jakes there, which is pretty cool. And the top right, everything is perfectly hiding behind Shifting Stones right now. <laughs> so I th actually think it's Circle, so that actually makes a that lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I can uh, see some dice, so dice are playing in the top right. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's what's going on on this table here. So for the Exemplar, uh, do they have any characters like uh, Elias Gade, or is it... I haven't seen any. I think it's a full unit of um, Errants and then a unit of uh, normal Knights Exemplar. Okay. And then obviously the Errants have a, a unit attachment there because there's a banner hanging out. We're coming back here. Our Cricks, the Texas are running up on the uh, running up on the tower here. We do have a new promotional card going out here, which is not being used on this table here, but one or two of the uh, the other players have used it, mm -hmm. which is a uh, a juicer essentially. Oh Your commander yeah, yeah. becomes a juicer, so you can like pay hit points to gain boosts and stuff, and you can get all those sort of transfer rules with this uh, this crazy thing all that's right. going. Oh. So right now we're playing uh, this game. One of the four games happening in the, the narrative event right now. It's happening on the train yard, and so. My name's Kevin Burton from San Diego. Very excited to be here right now. So right now we got my gators swarming in. We're slowly sauntering in with my dead fish. Right now the Grimkin have been almost completely wiped out thanks to my gator hus sneaking behind and just gobbling them away. Of course they shot him a bit and he had to explode. But you know, bugs and flies. Actually there are a few more that might die soon next round. That's exciting. And the rest of them are just kind of slowly gathering all these alchemicals and we're moving towards this tower. Meantime, we're part of the liberation. We are the good guys today because you know what? Someone gave us some special sauce, some magical dude. We're putting this on our, all our food and we're eating it and we're walking in here. So much so that my commander has an experimental juicer. Oh, he's all sorts of psychotic. And I can't wait to see if I can blow up a little bit more of these battle bears and mercs. Is that what I'm looking at over there? Eh. Contractors. That's fair. That's fair. What do you think the chances are that this train ends up moving at any point during this game? Well, the fact that we have Grimkin at all, of course mechanical doodads are going to happen. And, and there's all these trollkins just kind of sitting on the trail. I'm pretty sure next round is going to be amazing. Well, have fun, man. Thanks. Well, there we go. We actually got to hear a little bit about the juicer card there that I, was, that I was talking about. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that commander upgrade card gives you the ability to, like, Juice, sort of like Lucas de More does mm -hmm. as a Warcaster. You don't get Warcaster abilities, but you can boost stuff and that kind of thing. And when you die, you explode. Sure. That's, that's what happens, apparently, when you die on the, on the Crucible Juice. I'm noticing a theme through the models that we have in this, where when they die, they explode. Yes. Well, we've had a lot of Gatorman husks going around, which I feel like are a pretty flashy model. Uh, mm -hmm. And then apparently we had uh, a lot of these cask imps here as well, so they've yeah. been exploding. Ooh, there's a Witchwood in Melee with a bunch of Satixis over there. I wonder, I wonder how that's going to go. Looks like it might even be happening right now. A, a good bewitch right here could uh, could do some sweet stuff. Could take out a lot of these Satixes. All right. Let's see if we got anything in chat here. Yeah. There's rust in the tower. Yes. yes. That, it turns out when you take steel and you put it in a water tower with a bunch of water, 
You just get a pile of rust. <laughs> so I really want one of those madcaps to get to the tower. Uh-huh. Uh, specifically the one with the still on his back, and just start pumping it full of nonsense. <laughs> like nonsense oh, madcap juice. Great. That would be a great narrative token. Like, I want to I wanna put my madcap juice in the water tower and just have it start squirting everywhere. Yeah. Just make people near the tower get stumbling drunk or something. Just <laughs> Yes. Okay, I hope that happens. That would be another really good use of a narrative token here. There's a lot of familiar faces in this from uh, the Battle of Boar's Gate, I'm noticing. Absolutely, absolutely. I believe that both of those gentlemen on the left there Yeah, uh, were both in the Battle of Boar's Gate. And then this guy then, with the private shirt. And then Hungerford shirt. saunters up. Mm -hmm. Here, we, should, we should make up what Hungerford's saying right now. No, no, I just want it. I want it, it so much. Boop it on the head. Succulent is a word I use too much. <laughs> Succulent. There you go. It's perfect. That's exactly what he sounds like in real life, I promise. I mean, I work pretty close to him, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, me too. Basically touching him. Constantly. Something about cheese. All right, we're getting an update on score from Oz here. All Somebody right. just finished around two, one of our tables anyway. It does not appear to be this one. We've definitely got some more blood trackers hanging out down there in the bottom right. We're missing a lot of activation tokens it's over here. It's real disconcerting, this uh, POV, by the way. Yeah? Like, I feel like I'm getting ready to fall onto the tower. <laughs> Don't fall on the tower. It's got a pointy thing on the top. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, the, uh, the Umbrella logo from Resident yeah. Evil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, there's Matt Wilson there in the background. Yep. The man himself. There's a sneaky Charlie Foster. Yeah. All right. Another friend of the company. Oh, so defenders are scoring up to two points from this circle table here. And then they're going to roll for their objectives. Oh, and now the tower is going to do some weird stuff, right? Maybe, maybe. I don't know what happened on their uh, their pressure things here. But the uh, our mainstream table, our Iosin table here, yep. the tower already has a token on it. And remember, these tokens are going to hang out throughout the different games that mm -hmm. are going on. Mm -hmm. So while they're building up kind of slowly right now, uh, it's going to get real crazy on our second game and our third game that's going on later today. So. Have the, uh, the towers spewed any smoke clouds or anything yet? Nothing exciting has happened. I filled in chat a little bit about uh, what could happen. The sure. players actually know nothing about what can happen from these towers. Oh, good. So, so it's the roll of dice, see what happens, Oz will fill you in. Got it. So they, they don't know what's, uh, what's going on with, with sort of their, their things here. So I hope, I hope we can get some... I want to see the, the four result, I believe, for the big tower. So if you get four tokens on it before mm -hmm. it, it goes off, I guess. Uh, if I remember correctly, it just starts turning random people into transfers, which explode when they die. Yeah. Because yeah. why wouldn't they? Well, again, we're just playing into that theme. Absolutely. Death Blast. Death Blast. So who's your money on? The uh, Defenders, Liberators, Opportunists, or Wild Cards? Well, I mean, the Defenders are up 2-0 to zero from everyone, so I think they're going to be doing a lot of the winning this round. <laughs> well, this round, but I this mean, like, round. But overall, whole event. Overall, I feel like the Opportunists, like, they got the right theme, right? Like, it's like the get in, get out. Yeah. So I want the Wild Cards to win. Why is that? Because the outcome of this particular game, well, not this one round, but this event, actually will have an impact on the... Dead Reckoning game that I'm running yes. tomorrow. Yeah, we, we had mentioned that at the beginning of the stream, that that was going to be affecting your, your role-playing game. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Just no, no spoilers. No, no spoilers. spoilers. But like, uh, There's just some additional kind of narrative opportunities showing up in the game based on mm -hmm. what we do in this. Whoever sure. comes out on top is going to have some kind of impact on okay. the, uh, the three tables that I'm running tomorrow. Are, are you going to base any of it on uh, like the tokens that showed up or any of the effects that happened or it, anything like that? It depends. Um, I, I sort of have kind of a, a, a broad view of it right okay. now, but if something really interesting happens with these narrative tokens, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if a madcap starts to pump mm -hmm. its madcap juice <laughs> into the water tower. Can we just talk about the word madcap juice for Madcap juice? I... Uh, I feel like they, they got the good stuff. They got the good stuff, and that's why they're, they're all bumbling around and riding around in barrels. Those crazy caskets. So Oh, no, our poor gobber chef. What? He's, he's been shot. <laughs> oh, no. Poor guy. He's down and bleeding? He is. He is. Hopefully someone goes over there and helps him up. 
It looks like Gobber's getting picked off on this table. Because it looks like one of those uh, Swamp Gobber River Raiders is already down and wounded. Yeah, I mean, he got stabbed with a Weapon Master charge from a Nis and probably took somewhere in the range of like 15 damage. Nice. It's a good thing he's got one hit point. Yeah. It's a good thing. Uh, from chat, how is Hungerford on the commentator booth and on the screen? He is not in the commentary booth. Uh, I am Will Pagani, and I'm joined here by the lovely Matt Gantz. Well, I, I think they were referring to our spot-on Hungerford impersonation earlier. Oh. Yeah, I forgot we did that, because yeah. I have no short-term memory. I don't know if you guys can hear the, the cackling over here, but we got him. We got him. All right. I want that dragon wagon to just go charging through things. Dragon wagon. Yeah, I, want, I, I legitimately want somebody to, like, I take the Athank and break it out of the box and shove it in my heart, and then it gets, like, you have, like, a dragon driving a chariot now, <laughs> like a weird... See, I want, punk chariot. I want Hearn and John there to just jump up into the controls and start just stampeding all across the table. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. That would be, that would be fun. The dragon wagon. <laughs> the wild card scored a point on the train table. There... Oh, here we go. You, this, 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 this is what a comeback looks like. <laughs> I, One. I feel like I influenced that with, my, with my comment. You did. All right. A lot of decision-making happening. They're very, very, very direct pointing happening. Yeah. Oh, man, that Witchwood is living the dream, surrounded by living enemy models. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to boop some snoots, to quote Hungerford. T to quote Hungerford, mm -hmm. boop some snoots. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, no. Someone, someone's shooting one of these poor madcaps. He, did, he never did anything wrong. <laughs> he just has madcap juice. That he's going to fill that tower with. Man, if, if we don't get a madcap still up in there, I will be deeply disappointed. Deeply. So studious, so pondering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so how many of the narrative damage. tokens have been used overall? Do you know? I believe only two out of the 16 have been used so far. So I think in the later rounds of this game, it's going to get crazy. What do you do? Do you use your narrative token early to get an early advantage, or do you use it late? I think it really depends on uh, like what opportunity I get, right? Yeah. Like, like I don't know. Maybe I, ooh, hello, head. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, head. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it really depends, right? Like, you, you want to look for that perfect window where it's not just I get an advantage in the game, but, like, something, something changes cool the game happens, state. Something right? cool happens, yeah. So, like, I really like the idea of, on the train table, we have some gremlin swarms. Yeah. So I really like the idea of some gremlin swarms getting in a train and driving around. Um, I really like the idea of the madcaps putting their madcap juice in the water tower and everybody around it gets drunk. Because that'd be hilarious, because everyone's trying to always pack around this thing. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, these blood trackers, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like they're being pretty sneaky. You can do something with that. Looks like they're holding down the fort fairly well. We got a knockdown. What is that? Is that a commando? Looks like a trencher commando. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he's currently knocked down, so it looks like he was hit. But I, I feel like doing some stuff... Uh, Doug and I had talked about how all of the Ios and forests are always on fire. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a narrative token, you could set the forests on fire to kind of flush out these Tharn. That could be something cool. You could, like, fortify, fortify this building over here. Ah, so we had another one of our objectives do something here. Okay. Uh, the first effect that happened, it gave everyone around it a card. Good effect. Mm. Yeah. Second effect that's happened now is freezing chemicals are coming out of it. So, uh, everything within four inches of the objective had to roll a d6. On a four or better, that model became stationary for one round. Mm -hmm. That's not something you want in the middle of your force. <laughs> so, seems like really irresponsible planning to have these vents just scattered around oh, IOs. Sure, but they know what they're doing, right? Okay, they're but the vents in the train station, like, I'm just trying to get the four o'clock to, to <laughs> Clocker's Cove, and then suddenly I'm frozen in place because somebody was standing near a tower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it. 
The Iron Kingdom is an unforgiving place. It is, Matt. clearly. Very unforgiving. As we learned in, uh, in the keynote today, it's always on fire. Yeah. Always yeah. on fire. Like, imagine you're just trying to get to work in the morning, and then suddenly this weird-looking pile of, of barrels and tubes starts spraying acid all over. I mean, it, it seems like a normal commute. <laughs> like, it's just Tuesday. It's just Tuesday. We live in Seattle. <laughs> Anything could happen. Oh, there's a big fight for the tower on this one. There's a lot of models over there. Yep. I'm liking those Marauders. Those Marauders are in a pretty good position. Mm-hmm. All right, looks like we had a couple more round twos ending up. So we're going to have some more objectives, do stuff, and maybe some more, uh, some more tokens added to these towers. All right. I want one of these towers to build up so many tokens, like so much back pressure, that it just detonates. <laughs> so so who, who is that north of the, this tower here? It looks like some, some gun mages? Maybe? No, they're druids. No, those are Reeves of Orbros, it looks oh, like. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, six Reeves of Orbros are up there. Is that a Reeve hunter? No, that's, uh, that's Una, it looks like. Uh, the journeyman Una. Yeah? Like, these are definitely six reeves right here. Yeah. I think... I don't know what this is. Maybe a reeve hunter. I, I think that and right there this is, is Una. Una. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. Where's her war beast? Who knows? I mean, she's got three birds, right? Like, yeah. that's what I'm guessing. I can't really tell. Oh, Tony. Tony's helping us out. Oh, here we go. What are you? Good guy, Tony. Good guy, Tony. What? Are so it looks like it was a maximum unit of Reeves because there's seven of them right there. We got a shifting stone, a black clad. And I'm not sure what that, that other model is. That might be an officer. That's what yeah. it is. It's a, yeah, it's the bannerman. It's the, uh, the wolf skull on a stick. Yes. To lead the Reeves into battle. One sad little shifting stone back there. Yeah, where do you think his buddies are? I think his buddies are dead. That's... That's hard to kill a shifting stone in Company of Iron. It gets a casualty roll. <laughs> I mean, shifting stones can bleed. We, we were talking earlier, I don't know if you heard about this, if you were watching the stream or whatever, um, where Doug was talking about how in ancient civilizations you would mix blood in with your uh, like cement and stuff. Yeah. Ah. Tony has pointed out there's another shifting stone down there at the very bottom of the screen. Oh, which so means we have they are another narrative token very used, out of uh, on the swamp table. No, another narrative what? token coming oh, up. Here we go. A narrative to token. Oh, we're already here. Okay. So that's Orgoth Ruins. Even better than. All right. So hopefully Oz repeats what's happening here. So what do you want to happen? I would like to cause a 10-inch ale of casualties. So, casually rolls is a little strong. A little strong. Um, how about we do knockdown? And hmm, because you guys can be knocked down, right? They're not immune to knockdown. How about we do knockdown and we roll a die for each guy, and on a six, he gets wounded. That's a little less like I blow up your entire army. Okay, and that guy has to, that guy has to kill himself. Okay. So there we go. So that guy fed himself to the Orgoth magics. Um, who on your side is within ten of that? Because you said ten. Doesn't look like he is. Well, but they still might take damage. We have numerous tokens going on at once. Well, they. This table has one when we're done with this table. Yep. Yep. 
So it does look like we've Kay. got a lot of narrative tokens so right now. So we're rolling dice for everybody to see if they get injured when they fall down. So go, th go through your guys. They're within 10. So a six, I'm injured? A six, you're injured. Oh, wait, sorry. No, six, you take a wound. You're going to roll a lot of sixes, I can. And that one. That guy's also only knocked down. Yeah, I didn't want it to be like. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's fair. Just... He's pesky. He, pesky he keeps rolling ruins. sixes, by the way. So. I, that is injured. I would make this a little bit more punitive than you just lose that one guy, because messing with Orgoth stuff is always a bad idea. Always. Always. Well, it looks like it did. Uh, wow, that's kill a four sixes. Too. This guy is rolling all the sixes. I'm amazed. And that guy also died. No, not the mystery model. <laughs> he got eaten by the Orgoth magics. If I'm the circle player right now, I'm starting okay, to think so about how I can use my down. narrative token in the what and anything happened over there retributive way possible. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think that I think this is not the last we've seen from these okay. Orgoth ruins. So that was uh, one of the Orgoth shrines <laughs> activating. Now we're going to move to this table over here. All right, our next what narrative you, token. What, who you? Okay, so we got one last token that hasn't been used yet, right? Yep. That's it. So what do you got? So this wolf has been picking on my lancer, just picked him up and tossed him. Sure. And Jake's lancer is a little ornery and a little rowdy and doesn't really like that. I would like him to be able to land on his feet and charge back in as his activation. Okay. <laughs> so I think and he maybe. Is still in control. Oh, he is because she's your commander. She's my commander, and I rolled the uh, the plus three command range for her uh, yeah. commander benefit from the new benefit. Yeah. So she has a fourteen inch range right now. So he is in. Wow. <laughs> We've got Juicer Jakes. So Juicer let's say Jakes. that um, he takes some wear and tear. Okay. So he takes D six damage. All right. All right. So getting D six damage in on the lancer from that to land on his feet. So he takes three damage. As his like knee buckles when he lands and he like pivots, and then yeah, he comes back at that guy. Oh, and uh, windy sails in chat. So there chat we go. There's another American token. Now we're going to go over to Hunterford. Legal at the, the uh, uh, training table. They are. Yes. They I'm are. Turn the mic yeah, off. They for were a added. They, yeah, they were added in the most recent no quarter. Yeah. So All right. So we're back on the uh, the rail yard uh, table wow. over here, and we have a Grimkin player. Please introduce yourself to everyone. Uh, my name is Sergio. I'm from Sacramento. So you want to use your narrative token for this game to have uh, your gremlin swarm do exactly what? So the mischievous little gremlin swarm is going to run into the train and throw it into reverse and see how far it goes. Okay. So what you're going to do is they, they would be able to run this turn. We're going to pick them up off the table so that you are basically sacrificing your gremlin swarm. They are killed for what it's worth because they are getting inside the train. We're going to back the train up 3d6 inches. If you roll an 18, you collide with the cargo uh, train back here, and there will be a massive explosion across the table if you can roll trip sixes. Otherwise, it looks like you're just going to run over uh, some poor trolls standing on the tracks. All right. So nine inches. So hold on. What's going to happen is... Measure nine inches back. All right. Then we're going to put this fella... We're putting this model here. This model here, and uh, this poor guy is going to get shoved aside. The guys that were on the tracks are going to take a PAL 20 damage roll. They are also knocked down. You will still get a casualty roll like normal, so they might survive being hit by the train. And the train has been repositioned up on the tracks. There we go. All right. Okay, casualty roll for the guy that got shoved off to the side. He lives. First raider that got hit by the train itself as it went into full reverse. 
Oh, one guy got smushed under the train. And is that Volca? You want to use your... You, huh, you, you want to use your narrative point to counter with Volca and keep him alive? Okay. Go and roll some damage. All right. Give, give me your casualty roll. Okay, injured. If you want, since he's not flat out dead, I'll let you use your narrative point to keep him alive, and he jumped out of the way, and you could put him anywhere within an inch of the train, anywhere along the way. Do you want to use your point to do that? Or do you want to save it to do something cool later? You're going to save it? Okay. All right, so Volca's not dead. He's just injured and bleeding out on the tracks. Uh, good job on your gremlins causing chaos along the rail yard. I, that is exactly what I wanted to have happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, not, not Volca. Curseborn's my boy, but... See, I, I feel like... Like, if that was my Volca, mm -hmm. I would have been like, I want Volca to try and, like, hulk out and stop the train as it's moving mm -hmm. and, like, try and save his brothers, right? Because right, right. I feel like that's something that he would do. Like, sacrifice Volca. Well, no, he well, wouldn't no. sacrifice himself. Like, He's like, a I want, like, I want, like, strength check ah, against the train to, like, right. make it go less distance or right. something. So, like, he still gets hit by it, but maybe you can save some of your other troll kin with so, it, right? So, the odds were, what, 1 in 216? I really wanted that that the 18, 18? Yeah. just to see what something special was. Mm -hmm. we, we have a rogue Hungerford. He has shown up. I was coming to see how things are going over here. Oh, it's going great. Do, do, Welcome uh, to the live stream. Did you guys all catch the, the train being Oh, yes. We did. Oh, we, yes. we were just talking about that. It was great. And the Volca diving out of the way. I wanted him to get the 18 and everything to explode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Everyone dies. We, we, were, we were just commenting on the odds of that actually happening, uh, the rolling in 18 and everything exploding. We were curious how devastating the effect would have been. It would have been, so two, two parts. Uh, it probably would have been a massive radius around both of them that would have set everyone on fire yeah. and, done, and done damage because the, the back uh, train car is just full of explosives and chemicals. Right. Uh, but the character, the, the player, who didn't spend his narrative point to have Volca like, jump off the side of the train, Specifically, after we got off mic, said he's saving it for something nasty. Good. As good. nasty as the train Ooh. backing up. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we go. I do love the, the player ingenuity here and how they yeah. have to kind of be creative and come up with their own, oh, their own on, idea. On this Iosin table, say that one of the vanished is still in there. Spend, oh your, God. <laughs> spend your narrative token to have one of the vanished Iosin gods suddenly show up. That would be nonsense. That would be great. I, I still want this Warjack that's over there in the ruins to get up and, and hang out. Opportunists appear to have picked up another point. We have a report in coming from Oz here. And we got another round ending here. I don't know if all the tables have gone to round three just yet, but another one has done. We did have a couple questions in chat pop up here. Avon Chaos, any War Machine announcements from earlier? Yes, a whole bunch. You can find them on our YouTube channel uh, where our keynote has been uploaded. I will get confirmation from Tony. It has indeed. Uh, so you can check out all the different videos that we showed there. We announced the new game uh, called Riot Quest. Riot Quest. Riot Quest. Riot, uh, Riot Quest. We have, uh, of course, the new War Machine and Horde stuff coming out. We announced our new faction, which is going to be Infernals. Very exciting. You got kinda, real quiet when you said Infernals. Well, yeah, it's really weird to be able to say it out loud. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, it does. It's, it's it only been like weird. an hour and a half. Uh, and then, of course, we had Monpok stuff as well. We had a lot of uh, general information for Monpok, kind of that thing going on. I know there's a lot of people clamoring for more rules that are coming out. Uh, tomorrow night, we have a hangout where we're going to be discussing a lot of the Monpok rules and stuff that's going on with that. And so. let's not forget one of the best P3 videos we've ever released. Yes, Dallas and the rest of the painting crew made a music video. <laughs> And it's pretty ridiculous. And who even is Jordan? Who is Jordan? Who even Jordan, is Jordan? That's a fake person, right? Yes. <laughs> um, Wendy Sales, we'll recover this one here. Wendy Sales asks, are journeyman casters even legal in Company of Iron? Yes, they are. They were added in the most recent No Quarter Prime. We'll cover to, it so much that we'll cover it twice. Twice. Two covers. Two covers. Uh, Forged of Souls mentions that the mystery model was the Reeves standard. It was indeed. Um, and uh, Nurayan014, missed opportunity to suplex the train. That's what you want. Yes. That's what you want. Yes, you want correct. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, I just wanted him to kind of get in the way and stop it. But suplex the train? 
even better. What? Okay, he's a trollkin, right? Yeah. So they're naturally regenerative. Mm -hmm. Regenerative. Pardon me. I'd have him rip off his arm and throw it underneath the rails so it like derails the train off before it can hit him. <laughs> and sure. then he just slowly regrows it over the course of the game. Yes. That would be great. And Riot Quest. Riot Quest. Tony, I need a soundboard where I can push a button and it makes the cha-ching noise. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Tony's on it for a soundboard for cha-ching noise. Uh, a punch monk needs to suplex the train. How do you suplex a train? Uh, well, I think you pick it up and put it on your shoulder and then fall backwards. Oh, oh, you got to lift it up so you're yep. going straight up and down? Yep. We got some wrestling fans over here in the stream booth, so everybody's ready for this. Ooh. Here we go. We've got a lot of activated tokens here going on, so yeah. I think we're coming up we're to the end of this We're getting really round. close. It looks like there's that one player who has pretty much his entire trencher force to activate still. Yes, I think he's got some more models up here behind this tree. So, Or he's already cleared his tokens. Yes, oh. but it looks like we're clearing oh, tokens. Oh, we're clearing, okay. So the round has ended here, and it looks like, uh, Tony, we are jumping up to round three. Tony, by the way, is our wonderful stream operator here. He sets up all of our stuff. He never gets any thanks because he doesn't like us referring to him. He's actually staring at the wall right now and not looking at me because he doesn't want to be noticed. Just off into the middle distance. He's a beautiful man and he does a great job. What are you so. looking for, Tony? What mystery does that have to solve for you? Straight at the wall. <laughs> Tony, we miss you. I don't miss Tony. He's right here. I hang out with Tony all the time. Even in his presence, I miss Tony. Uh, Truly a unique individual. Seriously, though, like legitimately the nicest person at Privateer Press. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it looks like we may have an argument going for another, uh, another narrative token. Oh. What can I do? Either that or that guy is just really intensely gesturing about like, I mean, his lunch plans. I talk with my hands a lot. Yes, so you I, do. I, like, even when I'm not on camera, I'm still gesturing and like pointing at the screen and stuff and making little things. I thought that was going to go to me for a second when the camera switched. Yeah. But you only yes. get corpses when you eat things, not, not when, when you, you injure things. things. I don't know if you guys can hear Oz. I don't think you can, but that's what he just, uh, that's what he just happened. Yeah. That's life wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, what was it yesterday that made me cry? I laughed so hard. Oh, we were singing our Meow Meow Rocket Man song. Yeah. And Jack was like, guys, I do this every day. I just go home and sing to my deaf cat. Mm -hmm. And I basically died laughing because mm. the idea of Jack singing to a deaf cat is hilarious to me. So, yes, indeed. Here we go. An injury roll ends up in a knockdown. Oh, Jack uh, is one of our customer service representatives. I believe he is the manager of customer service. He is. So, so if you contact front desk at Private Gear Press, you you're might, talking to Jack. You might be talking to Jack. It's a beautiful man. Hopefully, we can get him on stream later. And he is a deaf cat. He named, does. Named but Fitzroy. Prof Fitzroy's not deaf. <laughs> Professor no, X Professor is. Professor X is the deaf one. Yeah. Uh. Fitzroy's just weird. <laughs> That's, yeah, okay. Fair. Fair. I... Oh, oh, somebody's dying. We're looking for a recover, recover card. card. He's got one. All right. We're good to go. We are good to go. I kind of want some... Grimkin shenanigans to happen where they start popping up on other people's tables. <laughs> that would I think that was last year's narrative event. Well, it so was, I but I don't know if it's going to happen on this one. I would love to see someone like narrative token and then ask for my unit of rocket men oh. to like deploy on the table and have yeah. like coming in a, a daring raid or something. Have you shown those off yet? Yeah, yeah, we had them at Mox last night. They were nice. just, they were out there, and I think the uh, the plan is is to. Uh, have him in display in the Hobby Lounge, mm -hmm. and then I've loaned him out to Jay Larson to play a couple games. Oh, excellent. So he's going to be playing in the Aaron Arena. You know, I always hope just a, a little bit that you'll see those people who pick up their army and get it assembled and painted and ready to go overnight because there were some Crucible Guard army boxes going out mm -hmm. at Cafe Mox last night. That, that stuff is always crazy to me with, with how that kind of thing goes on. Um, And yeah, uh, shout outs to the Mox Boarding House. Speaking of those army boxes going out, they hosted a sort of pre-show mm -hmm. uh, last night where we gave away a bunch of raffles and stuff and that kind of thing. 
but they kind of gave uh, like a big huzzah for an extra day of lock and load to, the, to all the community that showed up there. So big shout out to them. Thank you guys very much for doing that stuff. It's always a good time, and if you do uh, make it down to lock and load, definitely check them out. They're very close to where the venue is, and they have a beautiful store. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. And store. Uh, I, I saw Jeff Olson sending out pictures of people who won their Crucible Guard Army boxes. Absolutely. Looked very excited. Yes. So I, I like to think there are a lot of people excited about that. Yeah. Oh, and look at based that. Based on the number Speaker. of people hanging out here, I think I'm right. He's got his fish stick. His fish stick and his gutting hook. I'm, I'm hoping. Is he spectral or is he just pale? Uh, I think he's pretty spectral at the moment. A little blue on the end of his stick there looks sweet. I really like these cloud effect terrain pieces that Danny has made. Danny's our yes. terrain guy in the house. Danny does, Nelson. Uh, he does a fantastic job doing that kind Danny of stuff. Danny Samuels, not Danny Nelson. Dan Danny Nelson is someone else. Danny Nelson is somebody else. Yes. Oh, we got three blood trackers holding down the fort now. They're facing down these trencher commandos. You know what? Uh, I just blanked the name and I just said it. What our blood trackers really hate? What do they hate? They hate the grenades from the trencher commandos. Because <laughs> <laughs> even if you miss them, you gotta just kind of roll a six to kill them on the blast so, damage. So with their name, Tharn Blood Trackers. Yes. Are they following blood, or do they just get it all over your living room? Oh, that is an excellent question. An ex they bring it in from the outside. Yeah, is that exactly. what you're saying? It's like, oh, who tracked blood all over my house? Ah, God, these darn tharn. Just savages, the whole lot of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> they don't That's clean judgy. Their, they don't clean their shoes off when they come inside. They don't wear shoes. They just have bare feet with they don't, like, they don't, sock wraps. They don't clean their sock wraps off when they come inside. It's, it's remarkably challenging to clean off a sock wrap. How rude. How rude. Very sad. I'm interested to see what these Witchwoods do. Those things can cause a lot of problems uh, with their Bewitch. So maybe we're going to see like this uh, this Ogren over here from the Trenchers. He's going to get Bewitched and then shoot a grenade at his buddy or something. The, the Trench Buster? It's not yeah. just a grenade. It's a cinder bomb. A cinder so. bomb. So yeah. you're, you're not just blown up. You're blown up and on fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. Just a quick pan of the room here. In the background there, you see our Masters going on. It was 128 people. Uh, and then, of course, we also have the Champions, which was a 32-person uh, event going on in the tournament hall at the moment. And then, of course, upstairs, we've got the hustle and bustle of Iron Arena. Iron Arena is looking really great this year, by the way. I don't know if you've been up yet. I have. I have. The room that it's in is amazing. Yeah. It's got this giant glass wall, so there's a lot of natural light in there. A lot of space, like it's it's. Um, uh, Jason Souls, love it. our lead War Machine developer, is up there mm -hmm. playing a huge game of Unbound right now. Oh, is he playing with Protectorate? Is he using? Yeah, all of, of, his, course, oh, of course. So he's got a shrine up there and stuff. Well, I don't know if it's still on the table. It might have been well, destroyed by now. It started on the table. It started on the table. Mm -hmm. To uh, to also give a reminder for our stream stuff that's going on tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we've got the Masters semifinals and finals. Uh, and then in the afternoon and nighttime, we're going to be doing the Iron Gauntlet stuff. Is going to start up there. Uh, I will be back to comment on some of that stuff. Gets, do you know if you're if you're going to be on the streams tomorrow? I don't believe I'm on the streams tomorrow, exciting. but I am later today. I might be hanging out with you again. Oh, so exciting! So exciting! Yeah, I'm I'm a real thrilling personality, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I love it. Where's Hamilton? Where's our son? Where? Oh, hold on. Oh, you I, I forgot you were here. He's actually right back here. Hamilton's here. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to me that you know that Pagani and I yes. are uh, co-parents for a little pig named Hamilton. So Hamilton has a, a very sad story. A tragic. Goes along. It's tragic horribly story. tragic. He was abandoned in Chicago. He was. And when, get, when we were there for Adepticon, we found our love and joy. Yeah. Hamilton. Hamilton. He can speak. <laughs> Makes a beautiful noise. A oh. lovely voice. He'll be a singer when he grows up. He will. Um, but yeah, Hamilton has been with us since Adepticon, mm -hmm. which, because I'm horrible with time. When was Adepticon? February? <laughs> February? Yeah. March? I don't know. Something like that. That window. We've had him for a little while. He's been living in our office. We have joint custody. Yep. It's, he's our, our sweet baby boy. Yep. So if you're at Lock and Load and you want to come say hi to Hamilton, 
we'll be hanging around the tournament area and the stream booth. Come say hi. And to whoever <laughs> left Hamilton at Adepticon. Thank you. Thank you. He's brought so much joy to our you, lives. You've, you've given us a son. You've given, given us a new life together. Mm -hmm. Good old Hamilton. Good old Hamilton. Ah, what a guy. What a guy. So, Oz explaining battle ready condition in Company of Iron. Yes. So, battle ready means not knocked down, uh, not injured, and not stationary. Yeah. Basically, you are ready to do battle. Correct. It, I mean, it makes sense. But. Oddly, the name has nothing to do with that. It's just a coincidence. A total coincidence. Absolutely by accident. Hmm. Oh no, this is Gatorman Husk being stabbed by a Nis. This never ends up well for the Nis. Even if the Nis kills it, it will perish. It being the Nis. Is this our term Termite Husk? Yes, I believe so. I believe that is the correct table for this. Which is also our uh, Athank cart table. Ah, yes. So we might get some Athank cart husk termites, which would what, be what truly What if the termites terrifying. eat the wheels off the Athank mm. husk? <laughs> what if or they eat the Athank Athen wagon? Termites eat the Athen? Yeah, does it make like a million little dragons? Well, it wouldn't be dragons at that point. A million little dragonlings? Dragonlings? Dragon little little dragons? Little, little sweet baby you're, dragons? You're, you're picking like uh, a snake nest of dragons? Yeah. Uh, a hive of dragons. You just I like the tree. idea. I'll, I'll say that. Like, Everblight was able to put his Athen in a bunch of other people because he's like the weird science, uh, science, science dragon. dragon. Of the IK. Okay. But this is what, Nid Orboros, the like the champion worm. Uh huh. The one who actually beat up Toruk. That's that's his I think, so Ooh. maybe. Maybe yeah. termite dragons. Termite dragons. That would be horrifying. No no weird hut would ever survive. Like the termite weird hut dragons. on this table. Yeah. Oh, game state. Game state. Chit. No. Judge. We're what playing judge? This is Company, Company of, of Iron. Iron. We do have the Dallas chant. It's Company of Iron. Do what you want. Yep. Actually, some of our, our good friends from the Hardcore Casual group are yes. upstairs doing that right now. Fantastic. They, fantastic. they gave us these fantastic uh, uh, I won Iron great. Arena buttons. Mm -hmm. well, the Hardcore Casual crew is always amazing to see at shows. Yeah, they do. absolutely. They hang out at Iron Arena. They have a great time. All sorts of great stories always come out of this stuff. Uh, they have some weird formats that they've made up and they play that are like Frankenstein caster stuff before we had caster draft. Uh, they have this like caster arena thing where whenever you die, you just respawn with a different caster from your collection and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's really fun. And right now, uh, yeah. not right now, but today they've been playing sort of a variation on the Beast Hunt from No Quarter Prime number two. Oh, that's a that's a one of my favorites. But uh, for Company of Iron. Oh, so. There's some, some interesting new rules going on there, so Excellent. it can be adapted to Company of Excellent. Iron. I think Oz, either it's already out or he has made one for that, where it's like you're mm -hmm. hunting down a death jack. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of forests and stuff, and you got to find it. And inevitably, you always find it early, and then it just like murders a player and then disappears back into the forest or something. Are you, are you talking about the Jabberjack scenario? Maybe. That, so it was uh, a skin and moans named Jabberjack. Ah, in, yeah, might have been quarter. that. Yeah, that, was, been that. that one should be out. Yeah. So that's, that's a fun one. That's a fun one. The Jabberjack. Jabberjack. What a nice name. Yeah. Him and Hamilton can be friends. <laughs> it's funny. We have two monitors here, but I keep looking over your shoulder at yours. It's, it's despite the fact that I have my own. You, you do have your own. It's true. It's okay. We can share. We can share. I'm good at sharing. Get a chair. All right, we got some more Satixis running up here. I want to see something else go on with this Orgoth Shrine. So, were you here when the Orgoth Shrine oh, yeah, happened? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to blur it all together and not remember who was where, when. Is that Axiara down in the front there? It does look like it, yes. Satixis with swords. It's either Scar or Axiara, and it can't be Scar. <laughs> so. Now, that would be a narrative token. Scar was hiding in here all along. Scar on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Just a boat appears. That would be great.
I feel like that sea witch needs to be doing something weird on this table. Like tapping into the ley lines or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Striker911 in chat asks, will Hollow Holden be available online? I don't think so, because he's not an exclusive for the show. Uh, he has a normal release date and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't believe that he is available in the online store. Though I could certainly be wrong there. I'm not uh, the know-it-all about that kind of stuff. See, that's how you get Scar in Company of Iron. You guys got to make Scar Zero. Scar Zero? Yeah. Perhaps someday. We will you know, revisit she'd, she'd be like the... the 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 princess princess incumbent of the broken coast instead of the, <laughs> the yes. queen ah uh, the queen elect yeah who, who elects a queen I other than princess or queen amidala sure yeah that doesn't apparently make sense. naboo's political system is real weird real weird <laughs> so uh, bear or powerful wizard i love that name uh <laughs> Pagani, you should probably sing the Meow Meow Rocket Man song. I don't, I don't think I can do that. I, I, I get shy. You get shy? I get shy around microphones, yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> is it just the song Rocket Man? But, but you know, with like meows meowing? instead of words. Yeah, is that it? Basically, yeah. You, you Don't do it. <laughs> You'll make me laugh so hard that I'll start crying. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, yep. Meow, yep, meow, that's meow, meow. <laughs> that's that's the song. Yep, uh, you should do it. No, I'm not going to do it. You know it better. I'm not going to do it. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> yes, we got a heart. Oh, thank a you, bear heart. or powerful wizard. Yes, bear or powerful wizard. Who really knows? Why not both? Mm, a powerful bear wizard. Excellent. You know, it's kind of amazing that we get paid to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking about what just happened. You sang Rocket Man with only all the words replaced with the word meow on live stream. Yeah. I love it. All about it. Oh, no. It is 12.54 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It is indeed. I think that means that I'm not going to be with you much longer, Pagani. I know, I know. I do, I do get out of here pretty soon, and I will be re replaced by the great Will Schick. By the great Will Schick. The great Will Schick. Will Schick the Great. Mm. Mm -hmm. The Schicktator, yes. There's, there's a lot of injured models over here. A lot of injured models over here. It's like a bloodbath is occurring. And it's not even our Orgoth table, is it? No, there's no, not a whole lot of Orgoth stuff going on on this table. But that circle table back there has some Orgoth ruins in the middle of it. I still want to see somebody try and teleport, like, a piece of terrain with those shifting stones. Because yes. they're so huge, right? What if they teleport the tower? Because it's <laughs> in the center of each of those standing yeah, stones. right? Just teleport the tower to me. Bring it to the commentary booth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here we go. We got another uh, narrative token coming on here. Sounds like Hungerford's going to be taking on this one. Yep. Which is good, because it sounds like Oz is dying out there with allergies. Poor man. He's soldiering through, though. He's soldiering through. Pat Dunford back there in the background. He's the gentleman that won the Iron Gauntlet last year. Yeah. The, uh, the white shirt there. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're, they're discussing the options for oh. a narrative tokens. Oh, what happens when you're near the Authank? Yeah. All right, doing All right. some cleanup, rolling for priority. Yep.
All the objectives are now going to trigger. And here we go. We've got some decks getting reshuffled here. People drawing up their hands. Oz talking about how he's unusually tall. Unusually tall. He is indeed. I he think he's u straight. using that as like a power play against the players at that table. Yeah. yeah. Oz is now discussing the finer points of how to appropriately shuffle sleeved guards. I feel like we should have done an Oz imitation during all of that, right? Like oh we did the Hungerford one. We did. We did. But we, it's a missed opportunity, truly. Truly. I, I think the perfect Oz imitation is the reason you're wrong about liking this thing is. Yes. Reroll there, oh, cock die. What's going on in chat? There's not a whole lot going on in chat. If you guys have any questions, you want to talk about anything with Getz or I, feel free to ask us questions in here. We can talk about crazy things like how to make blood cement. Blood cement, I mean. So this went down a weird rabbit hole, which you weren't here for. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it again so that anyone that is new into chat can know the rabbit hole that happened earlier in the stream where... Doug was saying how ancient civilization uh, would mix blood with like uh, powdered stone and stuff, and that would be part of their cement mixture when they mm -hmm. were building bricks and stuff. Uh, this then led to the question of, is a shifting stone fe fed to someone by a gobber chef vegetarian? No. No? no? Do you think the circle mixes blood with their, their stuff to make shifting stones and molds? I mean, I think they do, right? Like the no, blood ritual. It's not, it's well, not, not mixed, with the mixed wood, in because right, it's but. just carved stone. Like sure. they, they quarry granite sure. and stuff. Sure. But, but they, in order to empower the runes, they actually do put blood in them. Okay. So, so, so a wold would not be vegetarian is what it, you're telling me. It certainly, it certainly wouldn't be vegan, right? Like there's, sure. There's, sure. There's some, uh, not animal cruelty necessarily, but there's, there's some... People cruelty? Some people maybe? cruelty that okay. has to happen before that shifting stone does what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta pay the toll to get the you shifting pay, stone. Pay the troll toll. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Liberators. Liberators have uh, scored. Oh, on our, on our mainstream table here, Liberators pick up a point. Tony or whoever, Good guy, Liberator Tony. scored a point. Good guy, Tony. Good guy, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize that we can hear them. It's crazy talk. Crazy. Oh, pan it over here. Yeah, you can see John there on the headsets. That's where Hi, we John. are. Bye, John. There we go. What do you think is going on here? Looks like some trenchers are gunning down some, some yep. poor indigenous Tharn people. Would you say that, like, trencher commandos fighting Tharn is, like, the U.S. expansion to the West? Um, I mean, it's certainly imperialist, right? Like, sure. the Tharn were there first. Sure. So, yes is your answer. <laughs> I... I feel like I shouldn't commit an answer to that particular <laughs> question, Pagani. It could be a little, uh, a little politically charged, perhaps. Like, let's just say that Signar, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't always own the Thornwood. Sure. Right? That's been Thorn territory since humanity started worshipping the Devour Worm. Just because they're different, they have different cultural values and a different religion, doesn't mean that you get to send military commandos to, to go in and murder their people. But what if they eat your heart? Well, then do we send in the military commandos? Okay, well, <laughs> who are we to judge the heart eating? <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't really want my heart eaten. Well, then stay out of their forest. Your heart I, will be fine. I'm not in their forest. I'm, I'm going to stay right here. Right here in the safety of Bellevue, Washington. 
in the commentary booth. Mm -hmm. There's so many c computers back here. It's amazing. So many. It's great. Hamilton is very impressed. That's his impressed voice. So have you tried doing the golf commentary thing yet? Oh. And now he's going to point at this tree and perhaps count how many models are over there. It looks like there's some thorn moving up on the southwest side of the field. <laughs> no, I haven't tried this. I you haven't tried that? Oh, you should. I think everyone will fall asleep immediately. I'm rubbing my microphone on you. Oh, why did I do that? It happens. Uh, one happy squid says, mind blown, Signar is actually the enemy. I mean, in this case, if you're on the Tharn side, then yes. That it's is true. true. It's true. The Grimkin don't like him too much either, so. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful tower right there. Who painted that, do you think? I this guy. I would say that you painted that because I know that you painted that. This guy. Those were a lot of, a lot of fun to paint. I had some, uh, some troubles in the beginning because I didn't quite understand the process. And then I sat down with Danny and he like, taught me a lot about it. It's really cool. Nice. Really, really cool. Is that just like cold steel? and It's cold steel and then uh, some armor wash yeah. mixed with umbral umber sure. and about a one-to-one. -one. And then we painted that in the cracks there. And then we went through with some weathering powders and kind of hit some of the cracks to give it a little rusty feel. Right. And then the roofs are painted uh, molten bronze and then hit with a... Uh, a really weird, I say weird because I don't actually know exactly what's in it, but it's like a patina mixture, like a verdigris basically, mm -hmm. uh, that as far as I know was like arcane blue and flesh wash mixed together. Interesting. Which is not what I think that looks like. I think that would make some kind of weird purple color because the flesh wash is kind of red and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it turned out great. And then you paint that over there and use your finger to streak it. So Did you use any like isopropyl alcohol to break up the surface tension nope. or anything like that? Nope. No? Wow. Nothing. Wow. So... That's like a really, really easy way to do verdigree like that that, uh, that really turned out very well and was a total mess. I got paint everywhere because I used my finger to do it. So, like, yeah, definitely ruined a towel because I wasn't paying attention. So w what you're basically telling me is that one of your finger paintings is being live streamed out to the world. Yes, correct. I use my finger to paint these a lot. So I painted these, uh, this one here and then the other one that they showed are the two that I painted. And you can see the ones that Danny painted, who's literally a professional at doing this, uh, where they have like glow coming out of the windows and oh, stuff. Yeah. And oh my god, it's beautiful. Danny did a phenomenal job. What is the, uh, we have a, a question from chat from Mobolts. What is the craziest thing still on the table that the Athank can be shoved into? <sighs> the tower? Yes. <laughs> Dragon Tower. Dragon Tower. <laughs> uh, I'm, this is the wrong table, but I would love to see what happens when you put it in a Witchwood. <laughs> I mean, or a Shifting Stone. Or, or a Shifting Stone, right? Like, Then it's definitely not vegan. It's got dragon bits in it. There you go. Yeah, so there's one of the towers that Danny put Yeah, but dragons are organic, beautiful. right? Uh, I mean, you would know. But to me, they've always been organic. <laughs> like, I, I think they're really good at simulating being organic, but... So what are they? I don't know. They're rocks. <laughs> you have it confirmed here first. Dragons are rocks. Well, I mean, really break it down, though. The Athank is the dragon. Sure. Everything else is just like kind of a, a weird skin suit that it wears around. Like a, a manifestation, essentially? Yeah. What is it made out of? I don't know. Is it like force of will? Like they yeah. just think well, really like hard about it and it makes blight. a dragon body? It's probably blight. blight. What is blight? It's got like organic qualities, right? But sure. Sure. Is it sort of like if you made like a, a fungus sponge and then surrounded a rock with it? Wow, you're making fungus sponges? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's organic material that you can shape. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Aha! Perfect. There we go. We figured it out. We figured out what dragons are. I, I've, actually, I think our first episode of Immer and Minutia, we just went off on <laughs> dragons and whether or not they were organic and... <laughs> What actually constitutes the dragon versus what doesn't? Ember and Minutia? That's a, like a hangout that you're doing, right? It's also a... A prime cast thing? A prime or? cast thing that we do all yeah, the time. Yeah, there you go. Me and Doug Seacat. There you go. Sometimes with guests. Ooh. Yes. I think during prime cast at this show, it's just going to be Doug and uh, the Wills. Ooh. The other Wills, oh. not these Wills. I don't get to be there. Sad. Do you? I don't know. 
I know I'm on the uh, I'm on the other struggle of wills. That's what I. Oh on. yeah yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are giving some hard hitting commentary about these games. By it's the beautiful, way. beautiful. Well, I feel like when it's a four player game, right? Like it's hard to discuss the strategy because the yeah. players are going to be interacting with each other so constantly that. Well, we can't really try and read what they're doing. This is a right? four times four player game, right? Yeah, this is we have a sixteen player game. Multiple tables, so it's a little hard to talk about exactly what's going on on this. So, but we do just get to hang out. Absolutely, and that's why I love questions from chat because they're the best. I just love that there's Swamp Gobble River Raiders over here. There's some awesome models, and I don't think they get enough play. I so. love the the River Raiders, honestly. The yeah. the Crab Grappler is my favorite. <laughs> It's such a ridiculous idea. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. I love it so, so much. These shifting stones are continuing to. Oh, to wait, move around this is over the there. table with the off thing. What's the Ooh. weirdest thing we could find to shove it into? Okay, it? well, Swamp Gobber River Raider Dragon would be super dope. Yeah. Super dope. All right. Um. Looks like we've got an injury roll here. What happens if you shove the authentic into one of the objective markers? Uh, it probably like, I mean, I don't know. Would it would it like degrade all of the water and stuff? It or would the, certainly the goo or whatever, it, right? It would like it would blight, blight the Ellen back, blight the goo tower. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, looks like we're gonna get an update from Oz here in just a moment. Uh, for the state of the games, what's going on with all the teams and stuff, and just kind of what is happening. What is happening? What's happening? Mm -hmm. So after round three, are we going to be taking a short break of play? Is that correct? I am not sure, honestly. I'm sure. Let us know. Okay. It's Will I am Hungerford in the booth? Back in the stream booth. Trying to be all quiet and stuff over there. I'm trying not to disrupt you. You, you guys, can't I sit down, you guys call me help. You can't fool me. I just couldn't see how you're doing. We're doing great. We were talking about how basically these towers that I painted were used with a like finger scraping technique to create the verdigree. Didn't you do that? I did, yes. Uh, and basically everyone's looking at my finger painting right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that one, I didn't paint that one. That's one of the Danny ones. The tables are gorgeous. They are. Absolutely fantastic. You missed uh, Meow Meow Rocket Man earlier. Meow mm -hmm. Meow 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 Rocket Man. I, you didn't tell me the word Rocket Man's permitted? Yeah, I know. Only at the very end. The oh, very end. oh, yeah. at the very end. I got it. Yeah, it's, uh, what is it? Rocket Man. Meow 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 Rocket Man. See, so the point is, if anyone else while we're playtesting says the word Rocket Man, yeah. then either me or Jeff Olson goes through the rest of the meow part and then ends it with Rocket Man. This happens repeatedly until Jason Souls wants to jump the table and stab us. This is true stories. True fact stories. <sighs> Hi, Hamilton. Ham Hi, Hamilton. Just adding a little bit to our conversation. Yes. I love this madcap is just slowly moving up the board and just dumping cast gimps everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I, dude, again, I want him at that water tower so badly. Oh, he's got to get it. He's got to get it. Not that it's a water tower. It's, a, it's clearly filled with some sort of, like, crucible a, guard nonsense. It's a goo tower. It's a goo tower? Yeah. I can see uh, Brent Walder poking his head around the corner, grinning like a madman. He's hanging out with uh, Doug Seacat. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're, we're resolving some more of the uh, the objectives over here. Oh, freezing mist. So, uh, once again, we're getting people frozen stationary yep. from the objectives. Absolutely. This is on a different table, though, correct? Yes, I do not believe that is on our table that we are currently on with the, the camera here. But that is okay. Okay. 
I, I'm excited to see what starts going on uh, in like the second and third and fourth rounds of this game that are going to get played yeah. over the next two days. Yeah. Where this middle tower will have a whole bunch of tokens. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to start real crazy stuff going down. So. Mm -hmm. Got anything interesting going on in the chat right now, Pagani? Oh, let's check it out. Let's check let's out the chat. Let's see what's going on. Mm -hmm. No oh, man, these guys are these guys are real quiet in here. Talk to us, love us, be with us. Well, let's hear your best Oz. Yes. Uh, they're having a great discussion right now about string cheese. Are they? Yes, definitely. String cheese. Hungerford loves string cheese. Oz is not a big fan of string cheese. That's, that's what I'm learning from this conversation here. No, they're actually talking about the game and stuff, and I think they're going to give us an update here in just a moment. So we're calling our break is going to be after this game is over. Or, oh, hold on, just had an or. Some beautiful uh, Grimkin war sticks over there. Yeah, from I see that. Our boys over at Broken Egg Games. They did bring us some cool stuff here to sell. We so we're doing an update. A very ooh, uh, update uh, time. If anybody's just joining us, this is our narrative event at Lock and Low 2018 here in uh, Bellevue, Washington, one of the suburbs of Seattle. Hi. <laughs> this is a 16 player, four table company of iron event that is narrative like our Borg Gate event at Lock and Load last year. Players can use their one-time-a-game narrative token to do something crazy. We've had some gremlins animate a train on a table back there. We've had somebody pull power from the circle of Orboro stones. We've had a model turn itself into a Gatorman husk. And all kinds of other crazy stuff has happened. The players are also playing in four teams. So we have the defenders that are trying to hold on to this territory, the liberators who are trying to take it back for the Golden Crucible, which is our brand new army that launches this year. Then we have opportunists that want the facilities for their own uses and wild cards, but nobody knows what their, what their plan is. And right now the defenders are winning three points to one point to every other army. This event's gonna run all day, at least until 6 p.m. tonight. We will take a break at some point to give guys a chance to get food and that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna go back to the commentators, Getz and Pagani over there, and give my throat a break. So, thanks for watching. And he just and, threw it back to us. And we've been thrown back, like the way, way back machine. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's one more way in the way, way back machine. The, as I was points at the tree, he says, this tree hasn't activated yet. <laughs> That's fair. It is a, a sentient tree. I, it would have made me so happy if he was just pointing at a piece of terrain when he said that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I thought was happening, and then I realized that it was the Grimkin. And there we go. Our Witchwood will, I guess, wander. How do Witchwoods move? Man. Do they teleport? Do they manifest? Well, I mean, we know that like the Hollow Men, when they are doing their apparition, it's just because they're kind of shuddering through the blasting powder smoke and fog, right? Sure. Like, it, very Jason Voorhees. You see them in one place, there's some smoke, then you see them somewhere else. Sure. I always picture the, the witch woods moving by, like, you see a tree that looks like a witch wood. It looks animated. And when you turn and look at it, suddenly it's not. It's just a really old oak tree or something. Sure. And then a different tree in your peripheral vision starts. Is, is now the witch wood. Exactly. So it, it jumps from, from. That's really cool, actually. It's a really cool visual. Because which woods are tricksy. They like are. That. And they've got a lady with them that throws apples at people. She doesn't throw the apples. She does. She offers the apples. No, 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 no. That's it, why it's a ranged attack, because she throws them at you. It's not the apple of the Hesperids. She's not throwing it in the middle of a room like, ha-ha, for the fairest. <laughs> I mean, I think it might be. Ancient Greek humor. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag. Brought to you by Getz. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's always... I always thought the, the bewitching, right? It was like, would you like an apple? Well, then take it. And she throws it at no, you. No, uh, like, that's how, you, that's how she gets them in, right? It's, uh, it's Snow White's house. Like, oh, are you hungry? Here, have an apple. They don't sound like that. They sound, like, alluring and attractive. It's like, 
you want an apple? Mm -hmm. Come here. And then, boom, suddenly you're being punched to death you're by a tree. Mauled by... <laughs> It really is quite the surprise for everyone involved, I think. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Oz has just ducked into the commentary booth, so we're, we're trying to see if there's any pertinent details over there. The answer is no. There are no. How much of Oz do you think the uh, audience can hear right now? I don't know. That's a good question. But the poor man needs a throat lozenge. He does. Sure. Oh, my goodness. Looks like we're just finishing up the round on this one table. Is that it? Excuse me? Are we just finishing up the round on this one table and that's it? Um, I believe so, yeah. These games are probably going to be wrapping up pretty quick as people run out of models. So yeah. I would expect these rounds to start going a whole lot faster. Yeah. So there's a little bit of the uh, attrition game going on, too. Mm -hmm. The finners are up to three points, which puts them... I mean, that puts them very farther in the head. Yeah, so very far ahead. Would you bring, like, a mountain of Mechanithralls to this, or...? <laughs> I mean, that would be fun. I, I do have, like, 45 painted Mechanithralls. So. Yeah. Although, in Company of Iron, every, everything is FA1. Yep. So you wouldn't be able to do anything weird that way. But I would definitely do... Like mechan thralls, bile thralls, carrying thralls, necrosurgeon. Sure. That could be fun. Sure. And that's a lot of duke bodies, right? Like yeah. it's just a lot of dudes. Uh, so I don't play a lot of recursion models in Company mm -hmm. of Iron. How would something like Alexia and the Risen work in Company of Iron? So anything that uh, returns models to play actually doesn't return any models to play. You get to draw additional cards sure. for that one. Uh, but anything that replaces models or puts new models into play. So for example, the madcaps, right? They make cask imps. Right. So th those are whole new models. They're not being returned to units or anything. So mm -hmm. you get to do that kind of stuff. Uh, and then Alexia with Risen, you don't get more Risen, but you can get Thrall Warriors because those replace models. Right. So that's, okay. that's how the rules work for Company of Iron with that kind of stuff. So the, uh, the Swamp Shambler is an interesting one because the... Uh, the Gatorman, Boko, or Swamp Shambler, mm -hmm. you are, refresh my memory, you're converting corpse tokens into Shamblers? Correct, but it is returning models to play for the unit. Yeah, so you wouldn't be able to do so, it that way. Yeah, you don't actually get new models, but you do get a whole bunch of cards. No. So, and that can give you a whole lot of stuff. It allows you to burn through your, your card deck, too. Yes, yeah, and find those important upgrade cards yep. uh, or commander cards and stuff that you that you really need. Looks like we got a narrative token going down. Nope. Hopefully Oz summarizes, because I could not hear what that guy wants to use his token for. Oh. Oh, they're discussing their options here. I, I like the pantomime. Yeah, he's flipping something. It's <laughs> The goblin's going to die, is what Oz just said. I didn't hear the player, unfortunately. So it sounds like something involving one of the river raiders and snagging the, the grappler, not maybe? in the tree, in the tree. What's the range on that? What's the, the, the claw six? Oh, mm. I so think you tried to, to steal so the gobber's we'll claw. We'll turn the mic on and talk about this. But and then yeah, I think shoot it at the tree and the grappling hook with it. Uh, sure. With that model that takes that thing. We are ready, Oz. Thumbs up. We no, they, they die automatically. So we got another narrative token. This one's an exciting swashbuckly one. Um, Hungerford's asking people their names, so I'll, I'll go on. Oh, yeah. My name's Eric. Okay. So Eric, 
Eric has some Nis Hunters in combat with a Swamp Gobber River Raider. And one of everyone's favorite things about River Raiders is they have this grappling claw gun. So what do you, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to step on the goblin's face, steal his hook, swing around, and get in some melee with some uh, fish things. So you're going to launch into the tree right. and then use that to swing yourself over and engage some more models. Right, the whole, ah. So and then remember, the rest of that game, mm -hmm. the rest of the game, that model has that oh. grappling gun. So the goblin gets squished. You grab the grappling claw. You can reposition within six inches of those of the tree, which is those other two guys over there. So you can swing in all Errol Flynn style and take a swing at one of those guys. Ah, yeah. That's the sound you make when you grapple and hook swing. Hi, yeah. Yeah. I like how we've referenced Errol Flynn and Tarzan okay. in this narrative tokens. Narrative token. Narrative used. token. And there goes cool. The narrative token. Oh no. Looks like he has missed his attack after his swing, though. Oh, no. It's truly unfortunate. I just heard somebody shout rawr from behind the curtain. There's a dinosaur over there. I don't think there's a dinosaur. They're, they're making hook and bait puns now. Oh, good. Oh, good. boy. Oh, boy. He, he's got a hook, so now he's bait. Mm. Thanks. Thanks for all of you. Hey, what if that uh, swamp shack there was just a bait shop? All right. Here's your challenge. Full of termites, yeah. It's a bait shop. Okay. Right. Okay. You have your narrative token. You're down okay. in this game. Okay. How do you use your narrative token with this previously established bait shop? Uh, am I the Gatorman player? Yeah. Mm. I want to not be the Gatorman player because then I would lure the Gatorman over with it. Mm. I can see that. Chum the water. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, chum the water. See if we can get some of those bog chocks to go over there. What if you chum the water and summon in a dracodile for like a moment? <gasps> And have it like rampage around the table. No, and then I run mean, away. Not just just for a second. Like it smells the bait, comes stomping in, um, eats a couple things around it. Yeah, performs a sweep or something, and then it's off. All right. See, that's how you use a bait shop. Or you have that model that just won't die. You drown him in the tanks of bait in the bait shop. Yeah, yeah. And then you can use him for the dracodile. Perfect. Perfect. You checking in on the chat? I'm trying to, but it's not working too well. There we go. All right. Kind of going back to an earlier question, it looks like somebody wants to shove an I think in a dog. Seems pretty crazy. Dog dragon. Poor dog dragon. I think it might actually be the horses that are over there with the with the cart. That's the craziest thing? Yeah. Well, that's how you get a Chosen of Everblight. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean... Well, a Chosen of someone. Chosen of Nid Orboros. There you if go. If that's the same uh, Authentic Wagon. Authentic Wagon. As featured in Wrath of the Dragonfather by Zachary C. Parker. Meow, 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 meow. There you go. There's your meows. Thank you. <clears throat> Having some trouble with the chat? Yeah. I don't think it's refreshing properly, which makes me sad. Nope, it is. No, because bear or powerful wizard Send just responded heart. to your meows. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that Grimkin jersey. The Grimkin jersey? Yeah, that's really cool. Is that... I, I'm, I'm probably wrong, but is that one of the off-world designs, or is that one of ours? I'm not sure. It might I, be one of ours. Me either. Off-world design make the sweet hats, though, don't they? They do, yeah. They make those beanies that everyone loves. We've got a bunch of those up in Iron Arena. If you I know. You could, you could play to win off-world design's beanies. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're going to be taking a break here in a little bit for these players to go grab some lunch. Okay. And we're going to put up a, uh, a stream stuff, uh, some 
reruns of some of our older stuff while we take that break. I wanted you to say test pattern. Some test pattern for one hour. No. Like the, the <laughs> poltergeist test pattern with the old Indian head. <laughs> yes. Then suddenly Coach is like peeling his face off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it does look like we're going to be taking a break here in a little bit for one hour. Uh, and when we return, they will be playing the rest of this game out. And we'll see where it goes from there. So we're going to be taking, once again, one hour lunch break. We're going to be getting back at 2.30 PDT. Uh, so one hour from now, 60 minutes. All right. Thank you for letting me sit over here, Pagani. Oh, you're very it's, welcome. It's always a pleasure. You're very welcome. It's and always great to be here. And when, when I come back, or when we come back, I do not believe that I will be commentating. I believe it will be Schick. So okay. I won't be here. I don't know if you will be here. Uh, I will be back at, I think, I, the 4 o'clock slot. I'm pretty sure it's Doug back. Oh, which Doug. Is, which he's is pretty excited. He's so. got a lot more interesting things to say than the, the Meowing Rocket Man song. So. <laughs> the Meowing Rocket Man song is great. It's fine. It's yeah. great. Hamilton but, will come to lunch with us. Excellent. It'll be fantastic. I love you, baby boy. Let's go eat at uh, Le Petit Cochon. Uh, I don't know what that means or where it is. The or Little Pig. Is. Oh, don't eat him. Don't eat all our right. son. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's say goodbye. Yes. Thank you all for tuning in. First streaming day of Lock and Mode.